Adams, the show. Let's turn off this Elden Ring music that'll get me banned somewhere. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Everything's ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and play the stuff in three, two, one. Your gods are dead. Your world is ours. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Core. This is Core. If you thought that was some kind of weird anime uh, intro uh, credits opening, well, guess what? That's what Bo's idea was when he made it. I don't know if anyone knew that. When you reminded me of that last week, I wondered how many listeners know that Bo was going for like a big, extravagant sort of anime intro there. You know? Well, now they, they know. should know. I assigned them with a task to make us a um, anime intro, but no one's stepped up yet. That's right. You guys are all slackers compared to Bo, who is eating right now. Uh, <laughs> let us get to the, Done, uh, the end of it. Don't, don't nobody write in and complain. Please do not fill up the core discord with complaints about me eating on the microphone. Yeah, it's done. It's done. done. It's all, all gone. Right. It's all gone now. Uh, but I would like to formally welcome everyone to core the podcast that thinks twice before eating shrimp cocktail in landlocked States. I may have had a recent experience with that. Uh, anyway, oh. uh, I won't get too deep into it. Also, I want to say right up top of the show before we get too far, today's a big day. I didn't even know it. I put this in the notes before I talked to him, but now that he's told me, it's even a more more time to celebrate. A uh, long time ago, or some time ago, a uh, dude named Michael reached out to me. He says, hey, I've been listening to your shows for a long time. Love it all, blah, blah, blah. Um, he gave me, at the time, three codes for a game they were working on uh, called Tower Song. It's an RPG. And I gave a couple of two, or I gave one to John and Bo, hung on to one myself. And I noticed as that game's been growing uh, in early access state, it was up to 97% positive reviews which is pretty freaking high and i thought you know what tonight i'm just gonna randomly give him a shout out and say congrats on on the high percentage that's amazing that's not an easy thing to do but i also found out full release today on steam boom bam so grats to michael and all the folks at omega entertainment for uh for doing a rad thing and also being listeners of the show i think that's great yeah congratulations yeah we should celebrate one another's accomplishments here on the show, and that includes you, listeners. We will. We'll do a show. That's how we'll celebrate. That's how we'll, we'll do celebrate. It the only way we know how. Do That's right. Show. That's right. We'll do a show, and then we'll talk about Mario for some reason. Not really. There is not a lot of Mario news. There is one Mario game, but uh, for those who don't think we talk enough about Switch stuff, today is a day for you because we're going to talk about Switch stuff. Despite the fact that that console is now getting pretty long in the tooth, came out in 2017, and I don't know what well, that puts it at what eight years, something like that. We're pushing ten. Yeah, uh, yeah eight. Yeah, because in two more years it'll be twenty seven. Twenty twenty seven. Um, they're milking it for all they uh, think it's worth, and usually I see that as kind of a bad thing at the tail end of a life cycle of a console. I'm like, oh my gosh, just kill it and hurry and get here with something new, something better. It's already behind in terms of hardware uh, power when it launched. That's okay because it's Nintendo. It's what they do. But instead, they dropped a bunch of pretty rad bombs on us at the uh, Nintendo Direct a few days ago. And um, while you're all sitting around waiting for a Switch 2, or if I get my way, the Nintendo, no, how, no, the Super Nintendo Switch. Super Switch. <laughs> Super Switch. I want Super Nintendo Switch. That's what I want. If they don't do that, no no deal, no sale. Not buying one. That's okay. not true. I'll probably buy one. Anyway, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff they dropped. Um, it's all rather exciting. For first seas, we're getting a Legend of Zelda game in the style of Link's Awakening. However, which is already very cool, and I'm excited about that in its own way. But here's the best part. Uh, you, play as, you play as Princess Zelda, and you have table powers or something. Table like powers. Yeah, it's become quite the meme in the last uh, couple of days. But uh, yeah, she's uh, up front and center in this thing. They should call it uh, the Legend of Link, because what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to do this... Oh, right, 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 right. Like, if it's always The Legend of Zelda and suddenly you're playing as her, let's flip it around, man. Let's have some fun with it. But uh, anyway, it looks delightful and like a game I want to play. And um, I'm kind of... I'm kind of thinking this would get me to to dust off my Switch because I've not played my Switch in a very long time. Uh, for good or ill, I just haven't gotten around to it. It looks cool. 
Yeah, what'd you guys think of this? I mean, uh, Link's Awakening is a personal favorite of mine. The old Game Boy game was amazing, and the remake was really good. I bought that, uh, played that through again. It's not the longest of Zelda games, uh, as you might expect, but I love the style of it, this little chibi-looking, you know, big-headed characters, pseudo-top-down view thing. Uh, big fan of that. And this looks like they're going to carry that forward, and you get to be the girl this time, and and she does stuff at tables. John, how, on a scale from 0 to 10, are you excited about The Legend of Link? <laughs> oh, um, I, should, I should give the I real think, name. Sorry. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. There it is. All right. Give me your, give me your I hot think, take. I think it looks cool. I think it's a cool idea. I think the idea of being able to play as Zelda almost feels like it's been a long time coming. It feels like every time there's a new Zelda game, it sort of feels like that's a discussion point where people are saying, like... Hey, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could play a Zelda or you could play a Zelda and Link? And it kind of comes up here and there. I do think it's, you know, I, we'll see how it how it goes. I always kind of pictured like it would be kind of neat if they had their own little like wheelhouse as far as like, you know, Link uses a sword and shield. Maybe Zelda, you know, you frequently see her with a bow, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they had their own like martial abilities but uh you know she's gonna duplicate some tables and stuff and <laughs> it's maybe a different direction than i would have gone but i i mean i also think that you know breath of the wild and stuff like that has really encouraged the the zelda series to kind of go further on this creative aspect so it looks like they're leaning a little bit more into um Puzzle solving, mm -hmm. which I definitely associate with Zelda. You know, like to to me, you you talk about uh, Link's Awakening um, or a Link to the Past, things like that, and I I think of the puzzles that were involved in it. So it's not exactly you know, it's not exactly what I would have wanted, but uh, I think it's cool, and I'll give it a try. I like the look of it for sure. This is more what I want at uh, compared to say another Breath of the Wild style one. So I, I I guess I do like that. It's not like this is a mainline one, so I'm I'm not trying to say it is or should be, but you know, give me something where we were not just riding that train forever. Bo, uh, your thoughts? No, oh, yeah, it looks cool. I like the summoning. Like it feels like it's for kids. Like you know, kids will really enjoy the laugh out loud moments that'll happen from you know building a bunch of tables and beds to climb up a wall or summoning a turtle to fight another turtle or whatever it is sure it looks you know it looks cool like i'm i dig it it's gonna be an 80 dollar deal and oh at that at yeah. that i'm pretty sure it's gonna be like link's awakening which is like link's awakening was appealing to me but i never wanted it wasn't 80 dollars appealing so i never played it i always forget that 69 here is going to be 79 there i always forget that yeah or not 69 no. 59 even i think so i don't know if it's on like a sale it's a, like it's just it's not nothing bad about the game it looks exciting and cool but i'm, I'm not going out of my way to play it but it looks amazing this yeah. looks like one i'm gonna probably have to play just because i I don't know. It looks like a game I want. So it looks I, like fun. It's it's a novel take. I think there's a lot of novel, what novelty? What, how do you say that word? Novelty. Novelness. Novelty. Yeah. Novelty. Novelty. That's it. Yeah. There's a lot of novelty. 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 There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of novelty. I think with what you're doing within that game world, like it's not the same old. Yeah. Like I, I don't think people would mind playing Link again. I don't, like John just said that, and that's totally fine. But the novelty of like. You know, doing the weird puzzly things is probably a good thing. Yeah, I think I'm sure there'll be some good p pure Nintendo magic gameplay in there, which is what I always look forward to. Yeah, I um, like the style too, the art style. I don't know why it just appeals to me. Let's talk to the more. Let's talk about the more uh, adult uh, game in the room, the Metroid Prime Four Beyond game. It's got a title now. It's got a Beyond in it, and it's been <laughs> seven years, I think or so, since they announced Prime 4 as being worked on, and then nothing. Yeah. Radio silence forever. And everyone assumed vaporware. But now we got video. We got some, uh, you know, kind of some ideas of environments. Uh, it looks a lot like what you might expect from Prime. You zoom into uh, her head, and, and, and you shoot first-person style, and there's like a, you can turn into your ball, your grav ball, or whatever. It's, what's it called? Not grav ball. Uh, no, it's a grav ball. Grav ball. Morph ball. Morph ball. That's right. Morph ball. Morph ball. Grav ball is an upgrade for the morph ball. That might be yeah. why that sounded familiar. Um, 
anyway, as a big fan of the Prime series, this looks great. I'm all in on this. It's also Respawn, not Respawn. Um, I forgot the name of the company who's making it. It is the same people that did the previous Prime games uh, are working on it, which I think is a good pedigree. Um, this is normally a kind of game that I would think they would hold on to for a new console. And I still think they might. We didn't get anything close to like a uh, a release date here. They may have said 2025. Can't remember. It said 2025 in the trailer. Yeah. Did they? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Nintendo has a long-standing history of having some game that is really exciting to people, and they've been they've they've kept them on the hook forever, and then it comes out right at the end of their current console, and it ends up being on both the old console and the new console. I feel like that happened with Twilight Princess. Um, what's another good example of that? They've done it multiple times. Zelda, Twilight uh, Princess Breath, Breath the of the, wasn't Breath of the Wild on yes. the U? Yes. Oh, is that true? Yeah. 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 So two, yeah, Zeldas, like two Zeldas in a row actually did this. <laughs> I feel around. like it happens pretty often. I wouldn't be surprised if this is that. Yeah. Um, I think this, you know, I love the Metroid Prime games. I, I really do. But I do think one of the things that made me laugh about this is, so one of the big things in uh, Metroid Prime is you scan stuff. You get yeah. more information. You got to scan it. Oh, no, and then yeah. the video they show her scan a space pirate. Yeah. And it's like, Samus, you've been fighting space pirates <laughs> in every single game that you've been in forever. Yeah. What are you gaining by scanning? Like, what is this? Yeah. A space, space pirate. Well, it's, it is it is beyond. So who knows what that means? Um. um but I, I mean that that made me laugh just because I was like, oh no, not not a space pirate. <laughs> but uh, it's I, I think it looks cool. You know, I I feel like my metric is always is it going to get me to get my switch out and buy it and download it? Yeah. And uh, it's definitely a contender. Like I I really loved all the Metroid Prime games a lot. Yeah, same. The, now, the big the big question before making any purchases in the Switch is will the libraries just carry like i think super switch yeah or super nintendo switch whichever it ends up being called yeah you just play and run all games you bought for switch on that library it should no more yeah no more of this like oh sorry invalidate like that's gonna really dictate like i don't really want to buy anything for my switch until i know the answer to that question that's that's, that's actually a really good point nintendo i I think they have a reputation well deserved of saying I don't know. <laughs> so I I think until I've heard, I think Bo has a a pretty good point with that. Yeah, like, I agree with it a hundred percent. I don't want to buy. Now you're making me question whether I'll even get the Link game because or the uh, Zelda game because I'm like, I mean, I thought we'd be hearing about it. They did say that there'll be news about a console soon. There was a tweet. Well, it implied like there won't be anything now, but it implied at some point this year. I think we hear about it. So yeah, probably this fall. I'm. You know, I'm I, I, I'm never mad about a, a reason to want to pick up the Switch and play it again. Like, I think it's exciting. You know, sometimes I do think about, oh, man, maybe I should buy a Switch game. And just There's a game that came out that was released on Switch. I can't remember what that made me think. Maybe I'll buy that and play that on my Switch and have that for portable. I can't remember what, what game it was. Hmm. Nintendo game or a third-party game? I think it's a third-party, but it's not one that I've played, like, on Steam and it seemed like a good sit in bed game. I can't remember, but there was, I had that conversation with myself at one point, like, Oh, what if I bought that for the switch? And yeah, yeah. you know, maybe it'll come to me. I, I don't know. There's a ton of games, but, um, you know, I, but with the switch Two being a factor, I'm, I'm like, I probably pick up a switch Two. you know, probably maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I think I would, you know, I'm still kind of, I still kind of tell myself at some point I'm going to play some Nintendo games, but I never get around to it. But yeah, um, this does feel like their time, though. If they if they're not backwards compatible this time, like there have been lots of times before, and we can kind of let some of that go. But if you're not this time, off. that's going to piss it's off a not. lot of people. There's like an expectation yeah. that we didn't used to have for this, I think anyway. And there's absolutely no reason not to. Um, let's say the only thing that could get weird, and even then they can port it. But if they stick to the ARM architecture, which they are currently using, and I can't imagine they won't because ARM is on fire right now. There, there's stuff happening with ARM chips that are um, unbelievable 
stuff. Like Nintendo's a little bit shaky in their boots right now because of it. Not I Nintendo, mean, uh, Intel's what I meant to say. So if they're going to stick with that architecture, there's no problem porting. It's easy, super easy upgrade path, not a problem. If they don't do it, it'll be purely some business reason, and it will piss me off. I mean, we're making a lot of assumptions here. There's an assumption that the next one's going to be a Switch. They're like, it's so successful. Why wouldn't they make the same thing? When yeah. You have the, doesn't have a track. It could be a VR headset that attaches to your dong for all we know. Like, <laughs> I think that's why they have gotten away in the past with not being as good at backwards compatibility. And I will say there is some effort that gets made sometimes. You know, like, I, I certainly remember my Switch having all the little, like, hey, plug this in here so you can do backwards compatibility. And all that like it's not like it's something they abandon every time um and sometimes it feels like the more gimmicky they get the more they feel empowered to go well we don't have to do backwards compatibility for that because how would we lol <laughs> all right um and but i do think you know the the press kits and stuff or the not the press kits the um the dev kits that have gone out have been labeled we've seen like leaks of it being called the switch 2 um doesn't guarantee that it's exactly like the switch but i do think that it there is a bit of an expectation that this is going to be a direct sequel to the device and i feel like if you're going to do a direct sequel to the device you better have backwards compatibility yeah. on it wow. um if yeah. if this yeah, is going to be nice. the super nintendo switch the switch to any version of like hey it's this device updated you better have backwards compatibility or you're going to have a lot of people upset sure they did this back with the GBA. It had uh, original Game Boy and Game Boy Color carts would work in it. They were awkward because they stuck out pretty far and it was just weird. But they did it. So I'm not saying it, this is the same world. I mean, cartridges was all you had. There was no digital option back then. Um, and I think their first digital store was 3DS. Or I'm sorry, 2DS. What was the 2DS that had this music hold on i even have the music i think one of them had this going on here it is oh dsi that's what it was yeah so the dsi had had um uh, the ability to download games but none of those were ported or portable to the 3ds when that came out which did you know had full-time uh uh store and all that the wii same deal the wii u would not do the wii games or no or did it no, GameCube games worked on the... So the, you're right. There's like little steps. GameCube games worked on the Wii, right? You could put the little teeny disc in there and it would play. But it was because it was basically a GameCube anyway. So they've made these little efforts here and there to make your physical media move forward. But only so far, right? Only yeah. so much. Not like multiple generations or whatever. Um, and so I suppose they could do the same thing here where it's just this one-time bump. But I think they are smoking crack if they think in 2025 and beyond... That you can't do that you can't have backwards compatibility to your to your modern games that's just crazy if they do that i think the biggest thing they need to solve like it seems silly that this would have me cheering but if they came out and said hey guys uh we have figured out to consolidate give you a singular nintendo account this is going to be your account for all consoles purchased if you buy a game digitally for any of our systems, it's stored there, and backwards compatibility will allow you to take it on any of our consoles now with the intent of going forward. That would be amazing. Right. Because uh, that that doesn't exist. And I see people saying they have it. They don't. Mm. Let me tell you, as somebody who lost their entire 3DS library, they say they do, and then you call them to get it restored, and they don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I can't tell you how many Nintendo games I've had to rebuy because, well, we switched this. Uh, do you have the original console? No, that's why I needed to get a new console is because I don't have the original console anymore. Oh, well, we don't. That's not tied in that way to your account where we can get... Like, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> and they need to get... They need to figure out how the internet works how accounts work and find a way to give you anything you purchase going forward to where it was like, you know, one of the coolest things about getting a, uh, getting the new Xbox was I logged in 
And there were my digital purchases from the 360 games I forgot I had purchased. It remembered. Yeah. Uh, it had a better memory on my purchases than me. And that's how these should work. Yeah. Um, and that's how Nintendo products should work. It shouldn't be like, hey, well, it's time to sell you another copy of the original NES Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> no. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, and it can't always be hidden behind services like, you know, Virtual Console before or the current uh, Switch Online stuff where that's how they they breastfeed you little bits of nostalgia. Like, you have to... I think they should honor our our purchases. I think it will drop way down on... They, they have the biggest problem with piracy for two reasons. One, their stuff's kind of amazing and everybody wants to play it. And so there's more people driven to pirate their content. But also, they don't give them too many other options. If you really want piracy to stop the way it currently is Nintendo, you make this shit, you know, you make it so when I buy a thing, I can keep playing it in a near perpetuity, you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, there's that. How about Mario and Luigi Brothership? I love the Mario and Luigi games. Huge fan. Uh, the GBA game, the 2DS game, and then the, I forgot the 3DS name of the game. I, that may have just been a remake. I can't remember. But okay, so this was this isn't the first of its kind, then. No, it's a. There's a whole. It's funny. It's been forever, so it kind of does feel that way. I'm sure there's some players are like, "Wait, what? This is based on." A I series. had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah. So there. So there's Super Saga was my favorite. I think that was the GBA game, and it was basically turn-based jrpg in mario's world but not like paper mario they they went a different direction with it and it's the brothers doing their shit and the brothers has <laughs> i knew you're gonna i knew that was gonna invoke that um <laughs> but they always had an amazing combat that was a little more active a little more super mario rpg i guess is the better comparison and you had to do stuff together it still was a solo game i assume this is too um but I love these. They're delightful. They're fun. Or they have been. I you know, haven't played this, so I don't know. But this is interesting to me. But this is absolutely a game that I'm not going to purchase for the Switch unless my unless those games move forward the way Bo described. If they don't, why, why am I going to do that? That seems dumb to me. So I'm not yeah. doing that. I'll just go back and play Super Saga on my, you know, Ambernick or whatever. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i bought that game you know I, yeah i owned that game and i would buy Your it again but give copied me... rom of the Android. exactly i mean somebody else may have done the heavy lifting on the rom conversion but i bought the game you know what i mean i mean yeah no i know <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I got you 100%. those games are cool though so this is one that's sort of on my radar uh I never played donkey kong, donkey kong country returns on the wii because i wasn't buying a lot of wii games the Wii, the Wii and I had a big falling out very quickly. Um, I, yeah, me too. Every time the IR sensor fell off the TV, I was like, well, that's gone. Yeah. There's... <laughs> that can't oh. be retrieved. The Wii, like... is the, Wii is the one, the 720p console in the era of 1080p. Yeah. yeah. At yeah, maximum, the, if you were lucky, you were getting... Yeah. You're lucky if you got 720. I think most games are still running at 480p, but it was just yeah. a... It was a GameCube in there, and they saved a lot of money, sold a lot of copies. The the motion control gave it a lot of you know initial interest because people are like, "Ooh, this is I got to get up and like swing that to play baseball and stuff." That's awesome, you know. Like they really took advantage oh, yeah. of that at the time in '06, and that's the one that what you could weigh yourself on it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the Wii Fit. Wii Fit is it, says Reggie Fizeme. Right. Anyway, uh, so what I did, what happened there was, I remember at the time everybody said, "Oh, the best Donkey Kong Country game is actually this Wii one. It's so good. You guys return to form, 3D, 2.5D, blah blah blah." Scott, why aren't you playing it? And I'm like, "Because I hate my Wii and I never want to spend money on it." <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Clip that one. <laughs> so, and the best Donkey Kong game is the the Super NES ones. Like, I mean, those are the ones that started them. This like... is like a direct sequel to those. So yeah. Um, yeah. But this is supposed to be amazing, and I'd always kind of regretted not getting a chance to play it. So now they're oh, re they're remaking this. Country Returns. Yeah, yeah. So they remade this, or you know, upscaled it, or whatever for the Switch. And also, that's interesting to me if it moves forward. These are all ifs. Eighty another eighty dollar game. Yeah, 
I'm sure, right? They're not going to be cheap on that one. I'm I mean, sure. they all look interesting, but I'm like, it's not eighty dollars interesting. But you know, whatever. It's Nintendo. I should stop complaining about it. That's just how it is. That's how it is with them. John, I'm going to ask you about this one, Dragon Quest Three. Uh, I know you. This is an HD 2D remake. But yeah, I'm. Term. What do you think? I'm of this? excited about this because Dragon Quest. We live in a world where uh, Final Fantasy grabbed uh, our our nation's interest and dragon quest had a really hard time making it over here. And now it feels like we're getting to a point where we're finally going back and revisiting the old dragon quest games and getting the bulk of those over here in a reasonable way to play it. I heard, I wasn't able to confirm, but I think I saw somewhere that this is coming to more than just the switch. Yeah, I think so. It's part of Um, squares. Squares plan is to get it everywhere. I don't think they're, Go that on makes it even more exciting for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would not have gotten this if it was just on Switch. Yeah. I will probably get it if it's going to be on a uh, PC or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm excited for it. You know, Dragon Quest is a huge long running RPG series. I have a lot of love for that. Um, I've really liked every Dragon Quest game I've ever played. And I'm excited about the ability to maybe go back and revisit some of those. So mm-hmm. um, I don't, I'm not nostalgic for it. So I don't know what to say about the graphics. I have heard some some belly aching about the look of it, uh, but I I don't know what it looked like originally. So I don't look at it and go, oh my gosh, a crime has occurred. Well, it like, looks a lot better than three on the NES. I mean, that's where this originally was. So. <laughs> like, if if this was Chrono yeah. Trigger, I would be full of opinions. Yeah. If Dragon Quest Three, I have no opinion. I think it looks nice, so. Yeah, they're clearly aiming for the Octopath kind of vibe. You know, a little bit of 3D, 2D, uh, pixel mixed with polygon, blah, blah, blah. Whether they succeed at doing a good job, I don't know. But Elusive Age, or is that the name of the ninth one? The newer one, the newest one. Is such an amazing game that I'll bet they're just new fans itching to go back and try old stuff. So, yeah. So, this is cool. Oh, this is one and two. I didn't know it was three. Or I thought it was three. I was looking at the three eyes. They're all separated. It's one and two. So, definitely NES. Oh, it's games. one and two and three. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. Wait, is yeah. three in there? Three's part it, of that too? Yeah. It's, it's, there's, th- there's three of them. They did this in the most confusing way. we like calling it HD2D. <laughs> they remake. did it with Roman numerals. They opened which made with it harder for Dragon Scott. Quest 3. Yeah. And then the guy came on. He's like, if you'd like if you'd like to play Dragon Quest 3, we're also doing an HD2, <clears throat> HD2D remake of Dragon Quest 1 and 2. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's like, well, why didn't you, why didn't you just say all that originally? Like, why? And then he's. He gave an answer. He said, because three is earlier in the story. I guess three is a prequel. Mm. So you should play it three, one, two. Also confusing. So I'm like, why don't I just play it one, two, three? That's how everyone else experienced. Yeah. But whatever. Play it in order. So That's weird. I, I guess the creator thinks three, one, two is the ideal uh, order in which to play these games. So they emphasized three as the big trailer. But they're, in fact, remaking all three of them. Yeah. So. Uh, someone, Sir go. John Card in the chat says, now bring back Shining Force. I agree. That's a Sega thing, though. So it could happen, I suppose, but I love Shining Force. Bring all of the games back. Bring, bring them all, all back. Give them this <laughs> we give want them this all treatment. The games. Yeah, bring them all. We okay. paid for them once. We're ready to pay again. I mean, but these are good reasons. Like one, two, and three on the NES, they look like, you know, NES games. Sure, you can go back and play them the way they were intended, blah, blah, blah. But if you want like modern ideas and some quality of life stuff and a graphical retreatment. This is where I'm happy to repay for a game because you're doing work. You yeah. know, you've done something to it that makes me go, oh, well, yeah, I already owned these, but this is amazing. I'll play this new thing that you've done. I felt that way with Link's Awakening. I felt that way with, um, oh, I don't know. Can't think of anything else, but there's plenty like that. Uh, uh, Blaster Master Zero. I mean, I would. I'm going to be talking a lot about <laughs> games that need just slight tweaks to very minor things to be considered new and fresh. Yeah, so, yeah. I I think the we always get caught up on graphics and right. for good reason. But I think one of the biggest advances that we've had in video gaming is a more standardizing and understanding of how controls in video games work. Mm. There is nothing. That is a bigger barrier to entry for me to go back and play. And I'm not talking about like NES era. I'm talking about games that are just, you know, like six or seven years old. Yeah. 
no bigger barrier to entry than getting into the game and going, why does it control like this? <laughs> why does the UI look like this? What it, What is going on? Like, we've gotten to a place where we've really standardized a lot of that stuff where you can pick up a video game and buy them, you know, for the most part, you kind of understand how it plays. And when you go back to games before all that happened, like, that's the hardest shift for me where it's just like, what? what is this why yeah. why is this like this it's like going back to old shooters on ps1 or something and then noticing even after dual stick uh, started happening on playstation you'd play a shooter and be like they're shooting with a even though they I have a trigger a button. to shoot and you're like why do you think they designed it like yeah. a trigger yeah exactly <laughs> it's a literally a trigger right they're triggers you're so right like that is i drives me crazy i have no problem with the idea that the world has basically standardized shooter controls on on controllers to and and, and keyboard and mouse for that matter to standard stuff call of duty's arrangement uh, halo to some degree those work great stick with that don't come into the market and go well what if you strafed with b and x you use the trigger to do an emote and then the stick just looks <laughs> around like why are you doing that let me play. Let me get in and play and not have to relearn everything. I hate that. Uh, then there's Super Mario Party Jamboree. I don't actually care about this game. Uh, but I'd sit on a couch and I'd play with some friends, you know, if my daughter had it or something. I'd, I'd plop down and we'd give this. Nobody a cares about Mario Party till they're in a Mario Party. <laughs> yeah, and then they true. care too much about Mario Party. Yeah, and then they want to kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I mean, I, I don't think know. Mario Party's like, oh, do you want to play one? And whatever one is around is the one you play. I don't. Yeah. There must be somebody who's like, there's a new Mario Party. I'm like, so excited, but I don't know them. I don't know who that is either. It feels like parents. just you. Is it parents? You just okay. Get it for your kids, I guess. I don't know. They're like, when can we all play together? Mario it's Party. Too, it's okay. too competitive around here. It wouldn't go well. Yeah. It seems like it's it's still got the board game thing, but there's a lot more focus on the mini games in this one, from what I can tell in the trailer. Um, all these games have this really excited guy talking. Listen to this guy. Let's see where. The ebb and flow of the tide can change your path. And things really get mixed up when the volcano blows its top. He's just... <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know. I kinda, I kinda... What's funny is that's not from the Nintendo Direct. That's a document documentary about uh, Pompeii. Oh, I see. Wow. Yeah. I, they really should make it yeah, less a, less dark. A little more reverence yeah. in there, but... That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of, I think there are probably people who are stoked about this. There's a few other things that were mentioned that we didn't get into. Uh, one of them, I just realized what it is, and now I'm sad I didn't include it. Um, for those that wanted to hear more about Marvel versus Capcom Fighting Collection, that's coming to everything. So don't, you know, you don't have to get your Nintendo panties in a bunch on that one. I hate that term. I shouldn't say that. Panties in a bunch. What, I hate that. Nintendo panties? No, just panties in a bunch. I always feel bad because it feels like it's... I, I mean... If my panties were in a bunch, I'd kind of, you know, I'd be irritated too. If I couldn't unbunch them, it just feels like the key it's... is not that they're in a bunch. It's just that if you can't unbunch them, it's like, sure. It sounds sexist. Is that what it is? Yeah, it feels sexist. Your... Yeah. It feels one sided sexist. It's also you know, like, let me tell you, somebody who gets their boxers in a bunch least. every now and then, it's not pleasant no matter what. No, you don't want any undergarments in a bunch is a problem. I could say undies so, in a bunch, we... just undies in a bunch. That's what I should say. How about that? And then it's not just women. They wear, quote unquote, they're sold panties. That's what they go to the store and see on the shelf. And then I'm not, then it's not aimed at them. It's kind of like when I say, uh, why I don't like the word bitch as often as I possibly not use it, because it feels specifically aimed at women. Even if it's not today, right? People could say to Bo, you, uh, you didn't beat uh, Elden Ring 50 times, you little bitch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people say this stuff. But it just still sounds yeah. mean to women Magnets, to me. bitch. You know, Jesse Pinkman really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an okay use. If, if you're like, yeah, that's acceptable use. All right. It's time to change. I think just, it's like, know. it's context. I think a lot, you know, the context originally of panties is it's another guy saying to another guy, don't get your panties in a bunch, applying that you're a guy that wears girls' underwear. So yeah, that's, yeah. Where, that's where it gets like. Yeah, it's one of those like, ugh, but yeah. you know, yeah. I don't know. I think it's still, I think we can take that one back. You know, I okay. think we can de-misogynize that one because 
And maybe you've done it with undies in a bunch. We just got to say it. It's just hard to change yeah. these things. It's kind of fun to say, undies in a bunch. It it's feels I good. think, you know, we all need to be sympathetic to getting <laughs> underwear in a bunch. Because <laughs> here's the truth. You know as well as I that anytime you do the weird walk to try to naturally get it out yeah. without having to, like, dig, mm. like, you know that that's embarrassing because you know everybody that sees you do it knows exactly what you're doing. Yeah. But then you know when you see someone else do it, you're going, <laughs> Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's he's dealing with a problem. The trick is right like, there. especially with boxers. The trick is not to like pick at them. The trick is to just shake your like do shake pelvic your... thrust until it frees up. <laughs> Everybody knows what you're doing, though. You might That's as well fine. just yeah. grab it and I'm, yank it's it. It's not a big secret, like, uh, but it, it depends on your personality. Like, Nobody I'll, sees someone sitting there shaking their leg like a dog I'll getting just its tell, belly I'll just rubbed put and my go. Hand, I'll you know, like. That's a, normal thing i'll rip my waistband open and stick my hand right down and go my underwear is stuck you know and just tell people because you're truthful that. you're a truthful on the face of it kind of guy you just, don't mess around i'm just i'm it, we're all embarrassed by different things just that stuff is not what bothers me someone in the chat suggested mantis we should call them mantis instead of panties no it just sounds like you're talking about the underwater mammal oh the yeah. man manatee yeah. pan, pan is not feminine there's nothing feminine about the uh the syllable pan right so changing it to mantis is not a one-to-one -one conversion no of you wear pants, pants you wear pants suits you have to call them bodies <laughs> <laughs> Pot, pots and pans right <laughs> oh language you got your bodies in a bunch what there even what even is language anymore um, all right, another game I was excited about. I forgot to put it on the list, but I'm excited because I'd forgotten this is the one that I was hoping they would eventually port. The original creator of Final Fantasy, oh. Hiri, uh, Hironubu Sakaguchi. I hope I'm saying it right. Oh, I know you didn't, but about. I think you were in the you were close enough. Isn't it Sakaguchi? You went, Sakaguchi? You Isn't it Uematsu or something like that? No, it's Hironobu <laughs> Her no, Hironobu the... Hironobu Sakaguchi, right? I think. Oh. Anyway, yeah, I, was, I thought you were talking about no, Nobu. Oh, Nobu's the uh, the music guy, and he's also involved. Yeah, yeah. He's also there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So these okay. two came together and made this game uh, called Fantasian, and it came out on Apple's arcade service as like I a launch title. I played it. It's one of the few phone games I've actually played. It's quite good. I always yeah. just was annoyed that I was playing it on my phone, and I wanted to have it somewhere else. Good news. They're porting it somewhere else. Now, I don't think this is a Switch exclusive. I think this is coming to everything as well. I could be wrong on that. I hope so. If it's coming to like Steam, I'll get it on my Steam Deck. Um, but it's a cool game. And what made it cool, I thought anyway, was this decision to have everything in the world's kind of a diorama. It's all filmed and then integrated into the game and they're miniatures. So when you go into a tavern, you can tell it's all like little little wooden carved things that somebody has taken, made a real small little version of that and then photographed this this thing imported it some in some of it looks like war you know like official warhammer battlefields <laughs> like yeah the same kind of material they used to make actual like uh warhammer uh can't like battle campaign mats yeah a little like. a little bit you're not wrong and i also thought that the the combat was really fun and i don't know i just thought this was a cool game when i played it and i would like to play it more completely uh so so yeah this well is... it's on switch but uh, we don't know if it's on super switch I'll bet it's on Steam. I think this is coming everywhere. Yeah, I think it will, too. Oh, uh, you think so? Yeah, I don't yeah. think this is exclusive. Um, in fact, very little today. They didn't have Nintendo characters in it. I don't think most of what they announced was exclusive third party. But that's true of a lot of third party these days, even when uh, Sony and Microsoft do it. So, so yeah, this, this okay. looks cool. It's got a really neat story going, as far as I got anyway. It had random battles, which I don't love, but I got used to it. Um what else did so they so it looked like you could save up the random battles to one big random battle yeah i can't remember there was a way to do something like that there was a mechanic where you could like not it wasn't like run away from the fight like you do in most of these games but it was something else it wasn't flee it was like ah, i can't remember and yeah, it is still i don't on, remember yeah, it's still on apple arcade if you have a subscription so it's maybe worth checking out uh, this is called fantasian neo dimension so they've added a little bit to the title Whoa. Keep your eye on that. Yeah. Some, <laughs> Whoa, indeed. <laughs> some primordial Final Fantasy style stuff coming out of that. All right. Uh, did, did you guys, anyone have any thoughts on Farm Farmagia? Oh, did I? Let's see. Which one's that? Farmagia. It's a game where you farm but collect Pokemon and battle other Pokemon. Um, let's see if I can find it. It felt very like. 
We thought we'd be selling a lot of copies before Pal World came out. <laughs> really? I don't know if yeah. it's not in this official um, list. Where the heck is it? Oh, here we go. Farm Magia. Um, okay. Just, you know, I know we got some people like a good farm game here. And, I, uh, yeah, I'm one <laughs> of them. Not, not to call any one person out or anything. I do like a good <laughs> farm game. I got one right now. I got my eye on it. So I'll set in space. I can't wait to try it, but more on that later. So this looks... The under uh, the underworld F- Felicia da oh yeah look at this 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 does look like a Pokemon ripoff oh she was on the Cosby Show right <laughs> <laughs> and uh, New World as well right after Felicia da Rashad right? yeah Felicia da Rashad <laughs> um, this looks a little more uh, Pikmin ish like you got a group of these things right yeah I yeah, mean it looks yeah. a little Pikmin y and you grow them. And the you actually hatch them out of your farm, and then you go take on creatures. Gross. That could be <laughs> it's an obscene corgi plant, is what I just saw. Yeah, this looks all right. Oh, and you try to get weak uh, characters. Of, or you 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 amass an army that's that can fight against the weakness of a dragon or whatever. Just kind of yeah. your rock paper scissors, but and then you go farm for this shit. All right, you know what? I I I, I, d- I demoted this, but I would consider this. <laughs> And I wonder if this is coming just to Switch. I don't think so. Don't I don't they know. S- That's what I was wondering. Don't yeah, they it's say? By Marvelous Incorporated. Mar- Marvelous? <laughs> yeah. That's what the, that's wow. The name of the developer. Um, they don't say, uh, but don't, usually they will say if it's exclusive. So I don't think it is. I think maybe. There's another one that we have to talk about, too, not just this one. Um, what the hell is New Dempa Men? New, new Dempo Men. Dempa Men. Dempa Men? Yeah. Uh, Wow, when I searched for that, I spelled it probably wrong, and the first result I got was uh, nakedwomensexgames.com. So I no, don't... no, 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 not that. I'll send you a t- uh, the direct with the time-stamped link. Okay, please do. Embed- embedded link. That'd be amazing. Is this it it's right here? Discord. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you already did it. You're fast. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is All definitely right. not nude women.com or whatever no, um, but they i mean nude is it's still it's in that it's in that vertical so this is already out by two days whatever oh, is this it? is okay. yeah, yeah it came out on the, the 18th new, this is the new dempa men right <laughs> right well, so what the hell are dempa men and why did, would anyone play it like can you let kids play this you know i don't know i don't think i like this no i know that's what i mean like <laughs> it, we talked about a lot of the winners i was like what the hell is dempa men uh, it's got and like they got rob- wouldn't rob- any parent freak out if their kid was like, I want to play new the Dempa Men. I'm like, it sounds, <laughs> it sound they sound like pedophiles right off the bat. Like I'm just like, oh my god, no, keep that away from my kid. Anyways, I don't know what Dempa Men is. I don't know why they're called Dempa Men. And I, I just wanted to say, Nintendo, it's maybe not a good idea. I'm sorry, the whole thing just turned into the. Uh... The uh, Metal Gear, not Metal, Metal, Gear, Metal Slug, Metal Slug thing, and I'm like, what happened to this game? And this all of a sudden, it's part of. I guess they they just did like a yeah. montage. Um, yeah, it was quick, but the Dempa Men really stood out to me. I was like, uh, I need to talk about this because what are and the way the voice narrator is like, you'd enjoy playing the new Dempa Men, and I'm like, no. It's like, will I? <laughs> will I though? <laughs> will I enjoy no. it? Um, here, let's hear him for a moment. I'd like to hear him. Meet the quirky little Dempa Man. Find him, catch no. him, and lead him on a joyful RPG adventure. No, no, I don't want to do that. Also, that I think that this looks like Roblox. It's I got don't want to collect a bunch of men in pajamas. <laughs> like I just, why is this a game? I have no greater fear than meeting the old Dempa Man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I love the idea that this is like. Are there middle-aged Dempa Men? Are there? Um, you know, I don't know, high school, <laughs> cranky, you know, uh, everything's sad, dump them in. Like, well, I need to know more about this. The whole thing smells like Roblox. That's all I'm saying. I get a vibe. Like a, um, yeah, I don't know. Like a whipped together thing that feels a little like Roblox. I think it's like a, it might be like a honeypot or a fishing thing. Like, Rublox. Whoever actually, whoever yeah. actually buys and plays this game uh, goes on a list. You know what I mean? Uh, Rublox in the chat says the, the chat says the old Dempa man is actually Tingle from Zelda. Nice, nice one. Yeah, he looks like a Dempa man if you ask me. Jerry Tolbert says Nintendo Tubbies. Yeah, it definitely got Teletubbies vibes. It's all very weird. Uh, but I guess get that. 
I'm not. I going just want to meet the people who are like, oh, you know, Mario and Luigi brothership. Ugh. Dempaman, <laughs> yes. <I'm> not, <laughs> like, is there a single human being that's like, this is what I was waiting for? The somebody, man. somebody somewhere. And I want to meet that person. I just want to know what they sound like and talk like. Maybe we should me. revisit it. What if it comes out and it's just like a gigantic critical hit? Like, we cannot believe. Yeah, well, that's great because this episode of Core is going to age like fine wine. Great. We can play this clip forever. Great. Jamie, get on it. Hold that one yeah. for us. Yeah, everyone's going to be making fun of me. They're going to be like, oh, look at you hating <laughs> Deppa Ben, dum dum. <laughs> hating on this, this future <laughs> classic that we just don't recognize. Yeah. All right. I'll eat my crow. I just don't think. I think Bo's right. I think this looks like Garbaggio. I mean, it's like scary. It's the, <laughs> scarier than the scary game. Yeah, I don't love it. Uh, all right. Well, that's enough of that. Let's get into the uh, games we played here this week. Where is it here? Oh, my. Uh, all right. Let's talk about some of these here games. Let's talk about shared play this week. We had at least a couple of us playing one game. Not together, but separately. And I assume this is all to beef up your your untarnished so he's ready, he or she is ready for the uh, the DLC. So tell me yeah, about he, your time in there. Yeah. Yeah. What's the game? You gotta tell the game. Oh, the El, sorry, well. Elden Ring or in past tense, Elden Ring. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> terrible, terrible joke. Elden Ring no, is what happens. I in like the it. Old, old I, age that was good. They want I'm dinner. A fan. All right, thank you. Uh, so let's start with John. You're back in and enjoying yourself, it seems. What do you think? Uh, yeah, so I started a new character on stream a little while back to uh, to get my sea legs back, and then I very quickly realized sometime last night after telling my trying to explain to my wife what happens when you die and why it's a bad thing, and I walked off a ledge and lost like three levels worth of XP, yeah. oh, uh, which she found incredibly funny. Um, I I was like, Ugh, I am not going to be ready for the DLC, but that's fine. I have a character that I beat the game with. I can just play that character. I've got, I figured out how to play this game again. I will just go in as my character from then. So uh, in anticipation, I thought maybe I could get in just real quick, check it out before the show, because uh, it technically came out about an hour before the show started. Yeah. So I got on my character. I was all ready to go. And uh, I was like, all right, well, I gotta, I know where I have to go to uh, start the DLC. And I was like, why do uh, none of the like shrines? I don't remember. I always call them bonfires because that's what they were in Dark Souls, but they're not called bonfires in this game. Uh, do you remember what they're called in this? Uh, Bo, just so people don't go crazy. Yeah, the what, little the, uh, Sites of Grace. Yeah, so... You sure had, you're ready to play the expansion? I know. Well, but the problem is, is I just always use Dark Souls terms for everything, so I, I always just call it uh, fires. Right, right. Um, okay. I just you're never bothered wrong. to learn yeah. new terms. Okay. Um, Good answer. Good answer. But uh, I, I went there and I was like, well, why don't I have any, like, I almost have no Sights of Grace on my map. Uh, and, like, the game had done an update, and I was like, did they do something to make you like not able to teleport like across the map or something? And like, why is it telling me like a path? And you know, I really should have figured it out by uh, spoilers uh, for <laughs> base Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, the big tree was just fine and dandy. It hadn't burned down or anything. I was like, the tree back. <laughs> what? Where's all my sights of grace? Aren't you a new game plus? Well, see, that's what happened. Is apparently, <laughs> sometime after I beat the game, I started New Game Plus and never finished it. Oh, right, boy. Right. And so I'm still very early in the game on uh, on New Game Plus. And I was like, but it was so confusing because I'm running around literally using a weapon you get from the final boss of the game. So there was zero doubt in my mind that yeah. I had beaten the game. This wasn't yeah. like an old save. And uh, so I am not going to be able to get to this expansion for a little bit. Yeah, it's going to take um, a little bit for me too, so it's fine. It's going to take yep. a while. But yeah. I, now, I've got what my I've weapons, heard, I'm ready to go. Regardless, what I've heard about this expansion is it's a, it's it's like uh, pretty much the level, level of content is comparable to the base game. Like it's just another game's worth of content. It's supposed to be a lot. Well, uh, what I read is 25 hours, but I'm hearing that that's... That's if you knew what you were doing. 
So well, pr- probably 20, a lot like more than the, that. The base game can be twenty hours if yeah. So you, you beeline to all the key, key points because mm-hmm. it's open world. Like it's like um, you know, Skyrim can be speed run in a couple hours, right? Right, like, right. Obviously, you're not meant to play that way. Mm-hmm. So not the speed run. Yeah, same, is. Sa- same deal. Um, you could probably beat Elden Ring in a under 10 i think there's a speed run for four hours or something like that like you can elden ring current leader oh my gosh uh the current new leader and this is as of seven months ago 19 minutes 30 seconds no glitch that's no that's a no glitch run Uh, wow i take it back weapon swap chainsaw glitch i don't know what that is all right so uses glitches Uh, you need to do like um Let's see. Can I do one with no glitch? Uh, oh, here we go. Any no wrong warp, all remembrances, console, all achievements. But like Elden Ring, the game is notorious. There's like char- like for um, being beat like by characters at level one. Like you can never level your character and, you know, get to the final boss and beat it. And, you know, that's also a thing you can do. Too. There it is. So. Four, 50, uh, 54 minutes, 40 seconds for no glitch. Glitchless okay. run. Yep. Yeah. See, so, I mean... That's how that's how open world goes, right? Like if you have the skill to like never get hit at all, and just whatever it is they do to get through the enemies, like whatever key weapons you can mm-hmm. speed through the game. Sure, obviously well, it's not most of us. Like right. we're gonna enjoy the game, and it's probably gonna be a hundred hours to two hundred hours uh, in the expansion. Yeah, um, yeah. These and I'm are... crazy overpowered too, so I will get caught up pretty quick the way i finally confirmed it when i started to suspect i was on new game plus was uh if you remember i couldn't i I couldn't get into the magic city and there's a dragon that's guarding where the key is to it and i was Mm. just like well i'm gonna just go see if that dragon's there because the dragons don't respawn when you kill them um so i just went down there the dragon was there and i just casually killed the dragon it wasn't a big deal Mm. so i'm grossly Mm. overpowered i was just like all right well dragon okay he's gone new game plus one is like um very incremental and difficulty spike yeah like i think the big spikes aren't to like five or six so yeah it's not it hasn't been very difficult at all like it's been pretty minimal fights like most things i mean i still have to hit bosses and dodge but like it, it hasn't been that bad so i'll i'll get to the dlc soon um and we'll see how that all goes but um yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. report back when I get to it. It might be Bo that talks about it for a while, though, because I've got less than a week before I'm going to be pulled away, and I don't know if I'll get to it in time, but I'm I'm excited for it. It looks good, and the reviews are great. Yeah, the reviews are glowing so far. People are loving it. Um, Bo, did you... So I started a fresh character. Oh, look PC at you, hardcore boy! I played the main. I played the main game on Xbox, mm-hmm. and that's being used right now. And I don't even if I had the Xbox, I'd rather. I bought it. Remember for the PC to play in VR. Right, right. Um, so I'm just playing regular flat screen right now. But like, uh, uh, I started a new character, and uh, it's you know to get to the expansion content. Still, you have to beat two major bosses, which yeah. I'm closing in on one, and. Um, and then there's a third boss that's pretty tough you have to beat. So I, I might not be there. Like, I'm not, I'm not going fast. I'm just playing the game again and enjoying it. So I don't, I don't know when I'll get there. But when it is time, like, you don't finish the game first. You go to the expansion content, go cool new weapons, and discover new things. So, um, And they have a way of increasing difficulty without affecting the base game. There's, like, a a different kind of way that they scale and that you earn stuff that only works in the DLC to increase your damage only inside the DLC. So when you bring back all the goodies and finish the DLC and come back to the main game, you still have a challenge on your hands. Apparently. Mm. Cool. Um, with regular leveling is how the system works. I'm that having makes sense. That's nice to know because I, my character is insanely high level, like way too high, and I, there is a concern. I don't want to get in and necessarily just steamroll the DLC. So. No, apparently there's a, there's a. It's like think of it almost as a different leveling system. Nice. So you might still be powerful. Like I, I don't know how it works firsthand yet. I just know that you earn a specific kind of resource to get more powerful within the context of the sh- DLC only. So yeah. there's a bunch of con- there's a bunch of articles saying don't go wandering in there thinking you're a badass. 
<laughs> like there's yeah. it's not it's not that it's like extra it's not like they just ramped up the difficulty to be way way harder it's that it's you have to approach it differently and the build you are relying on may not be viable some of the bosses are just going to laugh at the shit you used to do that kind of thing so. yeah that's the my biggest concern is as i got insanely powerful in the base game i started relying on just stupid cheese instead of skill for a lot of the fights and i'm so i'm gonna go in and be like look i poke the trident in the air and cause damage to everything around me and i feel like all the bosses are gonna be like get out of here shut up do you do you, <laughs> do you guys think caster builds are still a viable thing like if i start over and sure. buy the buy the thing on pc i think i'm i think i want to do i want to try something other than just a big sword or a shield or whatever yeah. i kind of want to go everything's viable the one thing i will say is it's just the early game like the first 50 levels everything's gonna decimate you like you're not gonna be you gradually move into power okay and you don't have spells right at the start like you well i guess you can't pick a caster yeah, class you, so maybe you can i did yeah. a an astrologer and i had a glintstone pebble that i could fire in a wave and it's very okay. powerful but you know i the thing i found about magic in that game and i didn't spend a lot of time with it like the chat made me play as a caster and i very quickly noticed i kept leveling up non-caster stats and i was like well okay clearly i have a way i like to play these games because i'm putting all my yeah. points and dexterity and other things but um what i noticed was uh at the beginning the casting felt incredibly powerful but then when you start to hit those, like, now you're hitting creatures where your stats need to be a little bit better, um, it feels like a harder wall. It feels like as a martial class, you can get by those barriers with skill, and you'll kind of overpower it. Because you are relying on mana with magic, um, that might feel like a tougher barrier uh, at, at certain points. But I, again, I don't know for sure because I haven't gone that far with a magic build. Yeah. yeah. Neither neither of us play casters. Like in this second playthrough, is like at points only into decks. Like and obviously vigor and endurance, but I've only done decks so far. Really? I'm like I should do something different. Nope. Dexterity. You're just doing, like, what twin you, blade. doing what you love. It's yeah. fine. And John dropped by my stream to tell me where the twin blade was. Oh. Although I I was confused nice. your advice, but I figured it out eventually. <laughs> yeah, you did it on your own. You're like, I was like, hey, here's where the twin blade is, and you're like. Double sword, whatever. I don't know. And then you did like, exactly what I said to do. And yeah. I was like, okay, Unrelated. well, he did it anyway, but it wasn't because he was listening to me. Yeah, yeah. Unrelated to the stream and chat room, I was just kind of like old man cranky like that day. Like I didn't really realize it till after I stopped the stream and I was like, I was kind of bitchy today. Yeah. <laughs> I just, so sorry. Um, that was me yeah, today was until fun. I got to the show, by the way. I've been having a piss yeah. day. Pissy. I've been pissy. Yeah. No one wants to be around me. My wife's like, you're cranky. I'm not hanging you're, around with you. You're, you got your potties in a bunch. Yeah. So my butt, my <laughs> my potties like have been in bunch. a bunch all day. And uh, I decided right before the show, I'm like, I'm not carrying that energy into here tonight. Well, so you guys will have to tell me how I did at the end, I guess. But I don't think I've been cranky. I, don't know. I, did, I have no, no cranky energy. But when, when John dropped by someone else, too, like... I don't know. I did this thing that was really stupid. I was trying to keep my deaths low, and I've given up on that now. I've died like twenty three times. Who, who gives a shit? Um, but I was, at the time, I was I was trying to keep my deaths low, and there was a treasure chest, and it'd been a while. And I'm like, I knew this is the trap chest, and then I'm like, so I shouldn't open it, but I opened it anyways. Of course, like an idiot. And I was just kind of being cranky about it, and then. I dropped my runes, and it was like, it was 800 runes, then one of the viewers froze fish, and he was like, why don't you go back and get your runes? And I'm like, okay, let me do it, and I died again, and I was like, god damn it! I was, I was, just, I was just, like, being pissy about it, and then mm. I guilted him into a sub. Uh, sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. This is what the business is. <laughs> that's the transaction that gets you to do it. That's the streamer business, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you, you backseat me and fail. You gotta give me a sub. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was just I was being so pissy that day. I was, was kind of like, yeah. It's a that's a tough thing about streaming, you know. You don't want to be pissy, especially playing a game like Elden Ring. Yeah, I think that chest is my favorite asshole move that that game plays, though. It is it is absolutely it is my time. favorite troll that that game does because not only does it it's in a fairly early place in the game, and you're like, oh, you have to fight through enemies to get down there. Then you open this chest, and it teleports you to a place that you are grossly underleveled for. 
surrounded by enemies. It does not give you a way out. It won't let you fast travel out of there. Mm. As soon as you step inside, there are guys that'll just... Your inclination is to attack people. The funny thing is, is that like, most of the NPCs around you will actually leave you alone unless you mess with them. But yeah. you don't know that, so you're like, well, I better strike them before they strike me. Um, it will just kill you. And even once you get outside, it has put you in a much higher level section of the map. And you have to know to fast travel away or ride away. And you are just in Nightmare Town. You are just in the right. worst the, place the also, in the game. The, the biome is there's a giant blood river, a blood lake in front of you, and there's blood red sky. Like it's it, you're in nice foresty limb grave, and then you get teleported <laughs> to blood bloodland. It's like it's like Mad Max land, but if it was blood instead of sand, blood, oh my blood gosh. and mold instead of sand. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't. Have you seen Caleb? You must have seen it in memes or whatever. Oh, I've seen yeah, picture. You, I've seen images and video even, yeah. but. Yeah. Caleb's pretty striking. So you're gonna play? Uh, I think I am gonna play. I think I want to. Um, you want to play know, solo, or do you want to do the the bow on the shoulder? I don't know. <laughs> the bow on the, bow on the, the shoulder. shoulder. I man, there's a really great art graphic for that where it's just like <laughs> Scott and just like your head on a bird on his shoulder. It's like, yeah, yeah that would be perfect. I uh, look. I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm at that stage where I, the the what the bubble that I hate is passed. Right, the pipe uh -huh. bubble. There's a new kind of yeah. hype bubble for DLC, but not for the original game. So I'm like, yeah. maybe this is the time. This is the time to grab it. It works on Steam Deck really well, so I can take it with me. Like, there's a lot of reasons why I should probably play it. But also, here's the thing. Every time I see video, I see one of these new bosses or something, like I was showing video a second ago from the from this uh, DLC. Their, their boss design, creature design in general, is unbelievably cool. Like, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's like nothing else that exists. And... It, I, I just know if I give it the proper headspace, I can escape into that place because mm -hmm. that part of it is very intriguing to me, always has been. Um, I just didn't feel like going all the way back when it was a everybody and uh, their dog yeah. were playing it and puffing up their chest and all the get good crap. And then the people saying, well, it's not actually that hard. And, you know, just all the discourse around it put me off. Um, yeah. And it's not the game's fault. I just need, I, I think maybe I can get around to it and do it. Yeah, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of conversation on that topic right now. No. Like, even Thank though it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice change. Nothing's really changed about the game. The game's still the same. Mm -hmm. I guess everyone's just moved on to other topics. Yeah, there's no one's... other shit to stir, you know? I mean, also, you're off Twitter, so that probably helps. That helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it, like, videos. Like, there, it was, it was a real kerfuffle. Like yeah, a lot of people bad. had their potties in a bunch <laughs> <laughs> over on one side or the other. We're and gonna, it's so uh, funny because it, it, in retrospect, it feels like such a nothing argument. Like I've even forgotten how many things that that game has in it to help trivialize encounters and things like that. That basically, you know, it, it was this huge discussion about like, should it have difficulty adjustments and all of that? And, in the end, the answer was it does. It's just built into the video game yeah. and it's obscure and you get in and you either participate them, participate in them or not. Yeah. And like, I just struggled to, to down a boss on the new character I had made. And I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot. I, you know, like there's a summon that you can do regardless of whether other players are playing and, there's uh, a shackle that you can buy from a character that will knock him down so you can get a guaranteed critical hit on him to help the fight. And like, there's all these little tips and tricks that you can go out and discover in the world if you want and with how you play the game, in addition to just grossly over leveling, is something that you can ultimately do as well. Yeah. And it just, once you realize that, all, all the discussion around it just seems silly. Yeah. And sure, you're still going to have people that are like, well, I did it without using a shackle. Or I didn't. Who cares? Yeah. But like, <laughs> uh, it's just all kind of built into it, and it's just cool. Uh, it's part of what I think makes the game design so interesting. Is it, it brings back that feeling I had of like old NES games, where it was like, oh my gosh, I discovered something. And it felt cool and organic that I discovered it. You know, like... 
hey, did you know if you talk to Patches, you can buy an item that'll cripple the first boss? Like, no, that's aw- that's awesome. What a discovery. What a cool thing. Oh, yeah, yeah I forgot about that thing. That would have been nice to know. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, see, I didn't know it on the first character, but when I loaded up my second character and I was riding around trying to figure out where all my waypoints were, I ran into Patches and I saw that item. I was like, I got that item existed. I forgot that was in the game. And I forgot about that too, um, because not that I it technically like I because I beat Margaret the Fell again, mm. yeah. Um, but it definitely took me about six or seven tries, partially because I'm trying to do a ranger build a little bit, so I'm trying to like main the bow, yeah, as as an item, which is notoriously kind of they're kind of bad, like hard. But it, I got I did it. I was able to kill it with the bow. Um, uh, but it took me quite a few tries. It would have been nice to weaken him a little bit, honestly. Um, but I did get frustrated. I did like I didn't rage quit the game, but I rage quit an area <laughs> at one point. Like, there's this area in the ca- Stormvale Castle where before you have to take down like three knights, and for whatever reason, by the time, yeah, you, well, there's that whole you got not only do you have to take down the three knights, but there's that whole area in the courtyard where there's a bunch of those hooded guys and there's rats. And there's just a whole gauntlet of things. And by the time I get to the last night, I'm like out of flasks and out of like everything. And the guy was just barely killing me. And it happened like seven times. It was taking so long. And I was like, you know what? Screw this area. So I, uh, I left to go, you know, do Southern Limgrave, that island. You know, like that's always kind of the fun thing about the game is just like, I'm actually having a hard time with this. I'm going to take a break and find some treasure get some runes and level up and you know it does as time traverses uh, and as you level up even i think passively you just do get stronger from leveling up it's not just the choices you make per se on the mm. on the thing you do your you stats know, go up does, right wow. yeah well you pick a stat for it to go up but i think overall globally your your power level does increase too like in the background even if not on the page there's like definitely some uh, now that we're on the back end, some complaints that are legitimate about the game and it being obtuse in terms of strategizing things. Because one of the things that's very misleading is um, when you look at a, at a weapon, um, it'll tell you like, oh, it scales well with strength and dexterity. Mm. Um, but that might not always be the story because every weapon has like different animations and different things that it does, particularly if it has magic uh, attacks or a magic thing associated with it so like there's one weapon that says gives it an e for its scaling with uh intelligence Mm -hmm. but actually um for its uh l2 they call it like the the ash of war ability it scales really hard (laughs) with intelligence so the actual ideal way to play with that weapon is to have high intelligence Mm. but you won't get that from the information it gives you in the ui like the way the ui presents the info is kind of shit so it's kind of to um, john's point though like it's obscure and difficult to wrap your head around but once you do you realize there are lots of ways there's, to... but there's areas where they could do it better because like right. dark tide did this because dark tide has a similar thing where like you might have three attacks in an animation and there's a screen in dark tide where you can actually see what type of damage it is and how it's affected by various models it's almost too much info but it's there for the nerds and people are nerds for elden ring <laughs> like for sure so like yes some stuff's obscure but like they definitely could they're it's, they're definitely not angels. Like I think on if they're gonna be like a pen and paper, like you need to know what's on your stat sheet to perform well. They could be explaining it better. Because mm. why not? I was yeah. looking at the list. Uh, Escapist has a whole list of uh, best to worst classes. Um, and John, they put astrologer as third, For as best? third best. Yeah, um, that doesn't surprise me. It felt surprisingly powerful. I think I, multiple times when I was streaming that, I thank the chat for giving me a powerful class instead of making me be the naked guy. Yeah, I, they're they're just like their power or their difficulty spikes throughout the game. Like, um, one of the things I, when a video I watched the other day because I just wanted to get a sense of it is that like there's a mul- multiplicative damage and damage mitigation increases by zone for the monsters so the monsters just don't have a default stat sheet the zone itself globally will dictate the multipliers on it so you can go from one zone to another and because there's no actual order there is an order behind the scenes 
but there's no actual order in the game. That stuff just feels harder because they just increase, you know, they just two x HP and, and, and mitigation and damage. And right. it's like it's not obvious when you're playing the game. It's just on feel. Like you're like, okay, my stuff's not doing damage anymore. Mm. Um, and uh, that was it's like that's actually kind of useful to know. So if you do go to Kaled, it's not even just that the monsters are harder, but that the difficulty slider is cranked up in those zones. Uh, the um, top three they give to Astrologer third, number two, Wretch, because you can do anything with it. It's basically the most tailored to your build. Spe- yeah, spec. Wretch. Yeah, that makes sense. And then Vagabond, number one, because, well, they say it's because whether you're new or experienced, it is simply the best starting class in Elden Ring. It has some of the best stat distribution for early game, fantastic weapon and some armor you could keep for the rest of the journey. Because of the stat distribution, it's easy to respect or pivot into another build. Uh, when in doubt, simply pick the Vagabond. So that's what they say. The other thing too, Scott, is yeah. um, there are um, larval, these things called larval tears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing's, what they don't call it what it is. Everything's like a finger or a diaphragm or a tear. And, but that, it lets you respec, basically. Well, uh, so I'm, you eventually yeah. can be like, oh, I don't like what I'm playing. You can fully refund all your points and just fix it. If you start with Wretch? With anything. Any no, class. regardless. There, oh, yeah. anything a, will. I didn't realize it's later. It's, a, it's, it's later in the game. Right. It's not very early at all. But you get to a certain point where you meet someone who can just completely, you know, full respect on your character. So, you know, if you get if you're like, I'm not liking this magic thing, you can just you know, switch out to whatever you want. Like it's not this game. Like the classes are just starting ideas. They're not, I don't think they're really something that carries with you through the whole game per se. Like you can always make adjustments. You know what I, what I find often happens is you're going around, you're doing your thing and then you find a cool weapon. Like uh, I forgot about these, uh, the Wolverine claws are a weapon in this game. Uh huh. I was like, mm. oh yeah, I forgot about this weapon. Maybe I want to use this instead of stupid twin blade, you know? So like, I put some smithing stones into it, and I like the Wolverine claws. So, and this game has like two hundred or five hundred weapons or something. Like, there's always something where you're like, oh, this weapon seems cool. And some of the weapons alone are just OP. Like that difficulty spike John's talking about is correct. And then you got a weapon, uh. Uh, they probably haven't nerfed all of them. There was a couple we found on our first playthrough that John kept telling me about. He's like, use this katana, use this hammer, they're the best. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> there'd be weapons where you're like, oh, I found an OP weapon. And then you get excited and you start thinking about, okay, I'm going to use this and build this way and all that. So how how are you knowing where, is it just from your playthroughs you know where these weapons are or can be found or who drops them? No, I, I don't know where most weapons are. Oh. Um, the, the only reason why I knew where the bow I wanted was was because I watched a build video on it. So I knew where the to gotcha. find it, it was pretty yeah. easy, yeah. and I know where the first katana is because it's pretty easy to get to, and I always remembered it. It's just you know, like, katanas are cool, so I'm like, I know where to get that. But I don't have, I don't have it memorized. But every time I get an item, I'm like, oh yeah, this item I didn't use on my first playthrough that seemed pretty cool. What if I try to use it now? One of them, a uh, blood fangs sword, I think, or fang, I think it's called, is like. Mm. A really fun weapon that has a unique ash of war on it that you can't change that lets you you sort of cut and dive back and then if you press y you dive back it's got this cool unique animation unique to the weapon and i was like oh maybe i'll use that one i don't know it's a great sword i'm not going great swords but Mm. it's got a lot of cool there's just a lot of cool shit that i didn't want to play elden ring that badly because i played another i played a lot yeah i played a lot of another game and then and then I started playing Elden Ring, and I was cranky. I was like, gosh damn it, how do I put my mount? It was this easiest thing. There's a way to put your mount by holding down this button, and it's easy. But I had my mount where my potions were, and I was bitching and complaining. And nobody in Twitch chat helped me out. Thanks, guys. Ooh, um, really? Uh, and I was like, there mu- I, knew, I, was like there, I know there's another way I could do it. I, just, I, was, I was grumpy. I'm like, I don't, I don't, why did I buy the DLC? I don't really want to play Elden Ring. But then as I played Elden Ring, more and more i was like oh i'm having fun just one more dungeon and just like one more area and like oh i want you know i want another challenge again like it gets his hooks into you really mm-hmm. i feel like really bad and now i'm like i can't wait to play again today i'm like oh man i'm gonna log in and do some more like it's 
It's got a really good hook, I think. Yeah, yeah you hit a rhythm where you stop being... And this will be probably the biggest initial hurdle for you, Scott. Yeah. There's kind of this initial phase where you're afraid of everything. Yeah, I everything do feel is, that. <laughs> everything is so strong. Yeah. And you feel so weak by comparison. You're like, oh my gosh, everything in this world I am scared to death of. Um, but eventually you start to hit this rhythm where you're like, you know what? I've leveled up. If I die, it's not the end of the world. I'm not that far from my body. Or maybe you lost your XP and it's like... Well, I don't have that hanging over me anymore. It's like it's like declaring bankruptcy. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it wasn't great that it happened, but now you don't have to worry about it. So that's you might as well just go crazy again. And that's I um, think that's the thing I need to do with this game is I need to trust that from software are masters at the balance of that. Uh, knowing that I will go in feeling weak and lame and, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm even going against this dude on a horse. He's just going to wipe me 15 times. To to take That fear is okay, but don't fear that the devs don't understand. In other words, they know there's a way. They made a way. Everyone makes their way. So I, there's a path for me. Part of my holding back on some of these games is feeling I don't have a path or that... Uh, yeah. I'm I'm I don't have I'm not in the secret cabal that knows all the secrets. And I think it, that would be true of like the other Souls games because they follow a linear path. Like once you hit a wall, you have one direction, which is to overcome it. And yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right? Like so this like this game as soon as, if you do something you're like, man, that really owned me. Yeah. Like, oh well, maybe there's like there's this other area I'm gonna go look at now. You know, like it just feels you never feel stuck on anything unless you're purposely being like stubborn about it. Like, yeah. a, unless you're like, I know I'm beating Mulaney. I don't care how many tries it takes. I'm spending another sixty bucks tonight, aren't I? That's what's happening. Yeah, I think oh, I, I think you should do play. It. But <laughs> yeah. um, John, are you? You know, yeah. I don't know if you want uh, a, a shoulder shoulder bow. That was always something that was floated. But if you don't need a shoulder bow, it's fine. Maybe just um, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what there I want. There are things the game doesn't answer that I'm sure me and John are taking for granted as just understanding. Like, right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, how potions work and, you know. Sure. Or just jump attacks. Like, you know, you, you kind of look at jump attack, like, just seems fancy. It's like, it's a big deal. Jump attack does a lot more poise damage. Does a lot more damage. Uh, jump heavy attack is uh, a big deal. Uh, you know, so it's like someone reminding you when you're fighting a boss. Uh, another big thing is like, you know, when you dodge roll, you always dodge away. Why don't you dodge towards the enemy? Mm. You're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But then, well, their weapon doesn't hit in that area. So actually dodging, even though it feels like I got to get away from this ag aggro ass freaking asshole that's like pummeling me, uh, you, uh, you roll to them and then you're safe and then you get a little quick hit in and then you roll again you know so it's like just someone there to give you like those kinds of little reminders um might be good that's all. also this game is cheap at times so do not be afraid to be cheap back i killed the knight that there's a, a people know exactly what i'm talking about when i say this there's a part in the game where you go through a door and i knew he was there and i was like oh i can see him i can target him and I was firing magic at him and it was going through him because the game's like, no, you haven't triggered the surprise. Just because you know the surprise is coming, you haven't triggered it, so you can't damage him. I was like, that's kind of BS. So I walked into the room, everything goes dark, he laughs, and now I got to fight this stupid, incredibly aggressive knight. And I hate him so much, he's such a dick. <laughs> and he killed me. And so I went, it's one of the longest runs. I feel like this game is so good at giving you like shrines where you need it. But this one in particular is feels like a really long run back up to this stupid night. And I went in, and I got my uh, I got my X XP back and I rolled back out and he got stuck on the door. And I was like, can I hit him? So I walked up and I swung at the door and I hit him and he knocked me clear across the room <laughs> through the door. And I was like, oh, shit, he can do it, too. But he can't keep charging me. Yeah. So we just played this game of I'd hit him through the door and roll back. He'd try to hit me through the door. I'd run back, hit him again, roll back, and he got stuck on the door. 
I cheese them, and you know what? I don't feel bad is about that, it. I'm all, yeah. <laughs> is that totally fine? Is yeah. that the night in Stormvale Castle on the yeah. way up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Where hate the that. lights go out. He's yeah, such yeah. a dick. Yeah, he is a dick. That that is yeah. But it's a good one. It's a it's it's one of those good moments, especially the first time. But yeah, he's a tough one to beat because the room sucks. Mm. I cheese someone in Stormvale Castle too. You know the um, mini armed guy that you fight at the beginning who ends up yeah. in Stormvale. Um. Because I'm bow build, and there's this little kitchen area where there's a bunch of those dumb undead guys warming themselves by the fire. <laughs> and if you're if you're careful, you kill them all, you know. And, and then you can just fight that guy uh, rather than fall down and fall. There, I think there's a way where you kind of encounter him, and it's like not in your favor. But if you you know path around, mm. so I've got a view on him, and I I have my bow and arrow, and I'm building bow and arrow. So I've been I bow him from the kitchen. And I, there's these pillars in the back, and I stand in the pillar, and because he's this big crab guy, he's kind of like can't doesn't know which way to go around, and he's too far away to reach me. So I just like ping, 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 and just like kill him till he's dead. And it, it was like no, there's no combat there. encounter. Like I just he wouldn't go away, but he wouldn't attack me. And huh. I was like, oh, I found a sweet spot where I could just cheese him and kill him. And I'm like, that, that's you yeah. know what, sweet revenge for what he does to you at the beginning of the game. Yeah, exactly. What a dick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, if the game's going to cheese you, you should cheese it right back. I like that attitude. I was also hoping, I don't know why I thought this, hope against hope, but I thought, oh, they have new DLC coming out. Perfect time to run a sale, you know? Knock 20, 30% <laughs> off this no, game. They, they know what they got. They know. They, they know. They know. Damn it. Yeah. They, this thing will never be on sale. I hate market. <laughs> I hate market research where they're right. I hate that. The good news is you don't have to buy the DLC right away if you haven't played the base. Right. Game. That's right. the good news. Because that is good news. Yeah. You just play the game. It's going to take you a little while to get to a point where you would be eligible for it. And then maybe at that point, I recommend maybe buying it if you are liking the game at that point. Like, yeah, spend the rest of it. Yeah. May as well just get it. I, you know, part of me, part of me is like, I'd see a 59, like, Space uh, Marine 2 is coming up, and that's going to be, what, 69? And I'm not even balking at that. It's like, yeah, that's what I'm spending. That's what we're doing. This game, yeah. I'm like, I know you're going to... I know okay. I'm going to feel like shit for a bunch of this, so I'm going to pay you to feel like shit for a while while I try I mean, I've to... i bought it twice. You wouldn't be the only one, so you can at least feel... I think I might have bought it twice. I think I bought it for Xbox as well to play there and also on my PC. I think I'd done both. Yeah, so I guess I'm. But it is a little bullshit. I'm looking right now. I'm like, why isn't it on sale during the launch week of the like all the newcomers? Like you could charge half price and DLC full price. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, do that. Oh wait, though, there's a discount. So not on my Steam. There ain't. There's no. Oh, there's no combo discount. Oh, maybe the Earth Tray. There, there is a combo price for both. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So, so Canadian Elden Ring's eighty dollars now. Buy Shadow R- Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree Edition, which I'm assuming is both games. It is. Is only an extra twenty six dollars for the DLC. So, that's actually half off the, a little more than half off for me the DLC. The DLC is fifty three dollars. Oh, you're right. Okay, so it's fifty nine for Elden Ring, seventy nine if I get the combo. Okay. If I buy I it have- separately, I'm spending. Uh, Sorry, it's Erd Tree yeah. thirty nine. So yeah, it's it's roughly the same as what you're saying. It's yeah, crazy so it, not to buy the combo. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. John. This is a John thing, where he is he loves to watch me click buy on things. No, on but the it, show. It, it it would be so much, like at least I can only I wish I go by American numbers, but like full price for both. If you were to do it that way, yeah, you're saving like thirty dollars off the whole deal either either i'm spending 133 dollars yeah. or 106 right <laughs> if i you know i don't know yeah I it's just, still cra- it's still crazy numbers for a video game honestly like but whatever yeah they're but they can get it because they're elden ring you know oh yeah, i still say the base game should be on sale but if i get uh Oh, that's one of those key sites. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going there. Oh, go to, you want to go to G2A or whatever? They'll scare me. They scare me because I, bought, I go to backofatruck.com. It's free. It's weird. <laughs> I, 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 I bought off G2A before. Yeah. Like I got, I got um, my uh, copy of uh, Microsoft uh, Office. Like uh, not the subscription one, but the the pay for once one. That one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's uh, I've. I buy. I don't go there often, but every now and then, when there's the game I want to, I don't. 
It's like it's a middle ground between piracy and full pricedness on Steam. It's like I can go here and maybe it fell off a truck, but I'm not buying at full price. Oh my so gosh. They these guys have I just I haven't been here. G2A has uh, a kind of a gambling thing where it says trying to get Elden Ring one random key for a global Steam key. Yeah. You yeah, pay yeah. seven bucks to sort of roll a dice to see if you get it. Do not do not buy those. Oh, I'm not doing that. Oh my gosh. I'm not doing buy that. Buy the combo, Scott. It's a long game. You'll get a lot of value out oh, of it. Oh, I'm not. Don't as trust long me. As you like it. Yeah, trust me. I'm not doing any of this G2A shit today. This is not happening. But <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. I mean for this game. I'm not in fact I'm I'm hesitant for any Steam games because I don't I don't want to F up my Steam. Honestly, the savings but, aren't that much. Like if I was to buy I'm not sure if these are Canadian prices, but it doesn't look like I, I think Steam's pretty comparable to what you can get here i'm talking like they have sometimes good deals yeah it's like you know 2.99 deals on like pretty recent games and stuff like every now and then are they legit um oh yeah you I can get a windows 11 cd key for 22 bucks like that, <laughs> that's what i would go but are they legit this. i don't mean do they work i mean are they procured in a legitimate way <laughs> or are these like ske- sketchy? i mean no it's i i i, I, I I don't know. Like, I think the answer is I don't know, but I, I think it's also They not. go out back and among <laughs> somebody. They just break into their house. Give me your Windows 11 CD key. <laughs> like, I think if it was, like, criminal, we'd hear about it, you know? Like, uh, it's probably just not an ideal method. Like, you're probably not sending as much money to the developer as you want. So if you want to support a developer, don't buy keys, you know, if you want the full of your money to go there. But I think, like... I I think it, it, these are advertised like all over Twitch and stuff like that. Like I think there'd be, uh, I I think I just think these sites wouldn't be running for as long as they have been. Yeah, maybe if they're they all on like they're they all were on. stolen. If they were like legit stolen, like no money is going to yeah. the developer for these. Like I, that, I don't. Maybe I don't they're all that. on like oil rigs out in the middle of the Pacific where nobody can. And they're out of jurisdiction. I don't know. I have no yeah, idea. Look, you, I can, you can buy Baldur's Gate three right now. Yeah, diplomatic 20, immunity. Twenty bucks. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three is twenty bucks right now. Really? On, uh, that's insane. And that's twenty can- Canadians, probably fifteen here or something. Yeah. So I look at that and I go like. I love Larry to have my money. I don't know if I want to buy it for this much, but if you were like either I'm never playing the game, or I'll pay twenty dollars for it, and it's kind of like I said, it's a good middle ground. Yeah, um, that's John, why it's like for it's for Windows stuff. I'm like I don't want to give Microsoft money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need their OS, but those. I don't want to pay them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get it, John. This is for so, you. I found it. Diplomatic community. Yeah. Diplomatic immunity. It's the best thing about... Um... These are police officers. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. That one's James Bond. Whole different thing. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. Uh, let's talk about now some games that aren't Elden Ring. That was a real flash. I feel like old episodes of Core came back in my memory of when we talked about Elden <laughs> yeah, Ring Bo a and lot. I play an Elden Ring again. Woo! It's- Look, you talk about it a lot because it, it does. He's right. It gets your it hooks in you, and you're just you find that rhythm, and you just go. And yeah. it is a very cool game. I gotta get in there. I think. Um, all right, I did get into something that I'd been looking forward to for a while, and uh, finally came out. So I gave it a shot, and I think I'm ready to recommend it. There's some rough edges, but uh, they seem to be working on those rough edges. You might be familiar with the uh, Airship Syndicate. Uh, this is the company started by Joe Madura. Uh, the people involved on all the Darksiders games, Battle Chasers, the Ruin King thing they did for League of Legends, uh, the Joe Mad art, very prominent through all that, and I'm a huge Darksiders fan. Anyway, they were making an MMO called Wayfinder, and uh, um, it they pivoted here recently before release. It is no longer an MMO. It is an action RPG with a lot of MMO trappings, but it is no longer like a big, giant, you know, 300 people in town uh free to play MMO, which was the original plan. Uh, they went back to, they decided to publish it themselves, pulled back from the the scale of it and said, well, what if all our towns are here and all our cool stuff is still in the game and all the mechanics and the, and the instances and the, and the raids and all the stuff we were planning on doing is all there, but it's you and, and, and you can solo or you can pull in some buddies sort of, uh, I, I don't know, um, oh, like just a, play like multiplayer, like uh, online. Yeah, it's like playing. It's not quite like playing Warframe, but that that idea of 
you know, it's a loot, it's a looter shooter slash RPG. It's not shooter. There's a character that shoots a lot, and we're looking at him now. But there's also, you know, a character <laughs> that's ma- mainly a tank. There's a there's a wizard lady. Uh, all the stuff you expect in your fantasy games. Um, anyway, it's uh, it reminds me a lot of Destiny or you know something like that where you you have an overworld and there's a lot of shit going on up there but then also you go on these missions and they take you into these instances and inside there if your loot level is high enough you can you know solo through it and get new loot and come out with better weapons better stuff better whatever and it's all in that met and like they said the joe madura kind of art style which i love i know john's a big fan of his stuff too yeah it's, it's really so really really good um anyway uh it is very cool it's called wayfinder i should say the name um it is good. I think it's got a oh, it's the echoes is is now the the key or the uh, the new name. So it's Wayfinder colon echoes. Some people were mad. They wanted a new MMO and they said, yeah, but to sustain that for a reasonable amount of time, you need a lot more money than we can get out of our publishing deal. So instead, this is a pay for game. They stripped out all free to play mechanic or all free to play uh, transactions. So there's no it's buy it once. No, no, never pay a transaction for anything. Um, it's actually a big win because if it's an MMO, they shut it down. It's just gone forever. Like no one can play Wildstar. Yeah, you know? I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree with that. This is a way to keep it alive and make it playable, whether you have an internet connection or not. You can just play this game. And um, my big, my first impressions are the cities and the zones and kind of just like the environments are amazing. They're really cool. Like some of the most cool detailed stuff I've seen in one of these things. Um, but I, that mm. that matches with you know what I expect from this dev. They're they're very visual and I don't know their stuff's very cool. What made you decide to try it? You know, just given there's a lot of games, what drew you to um, play it? One, the art style well, or? one is I like a loot loot grinder. You know, I like Diablo style. Like I'm gonna go in this place and come out with better shit. I like that just as a standard thing. Um, but mainly, I was drawn because they've never made a game I didn't like and. Um, Darksiders in particular is just such a great freaking series, and I love, I love everything about those things. And so I was, I was like, well, they've not let me down, um, ever really. I've never played a game of theirs I didn't like, and so I, I kind of based a bunch of that on that. It was also cheap. I think it was like twenty two bucks on sale to for the launch, and um, it just seemed like a, kind of a no brainer. It was also Steam Deck verified on day one, so I'm like, yeah, this will be some good bedtime stuff too. So I can do this, you know, before bed or whatever. Only problem with that is they, with a patch, a recent patch, they introduced a bunch of performance issues on Steam Deck. It's fine on PC, but Steam Deck's got some issues. They're working on them now, but it's super annoying because um, I was really looking forward to playing it there, and I, I get yeah, weird. I, I get lockups and just some weird stuff with it that I haven't really had with other games. They're very active though in like telling the community what they're up to, what they're working on. And, you know, very aware of issues and stuff. So it's that's good to see. But that's the main reason I just wanted to play a competent one of these. And the fact that it was this team was just gravy because I just really like the way they make games and how they look and feel. And it's definitely a, a, a very cool stylized thing. It's funny you mentioned, um, uh, what was the MMO you just mentioned? Uh, uh, Dark Wildstar. Or Wildstar. Don't want to say Darkstar. Anyway, Wildstar, <laughs> there's, there's some vibes in this visually that are not taken from it, but definitely have, a, there's a lot of color in here. And there's a lot of fantasy mixed with sci-fi elements. Um, you know, you're kind of there's you're kind of in a digital world for parts of your stuff, and some of the boss fights are, you know, dudes with big guns mounted on them, and then sometimes it's more traditional, like oh, it's kind of a dragon, I guess, or whatever. So there's a real mix here, and it reminds me of WildStar a lot. It's not overtly science fiction, but it's got some stuff. Um, it's cool. <clears throat> I like it a lot. I think that they there's some polish that needs to be done. I think they just need to optimize a few things, but. It's a game I can see myself returning to a lot, and I, I hope it finds uh, a happy home with players. I think it's cool. Yeah, well, that uh, that certainly makes it a little more interesting. I went ahead and wish listed it. Yeah, um, keep your eye on that. It's not, you know, like I say, I don't think, it doesn't feel, it's not that it doesn't feel done. It just feels like with a pivot that hard from full-blown MMO to not that, but keeping most of the systems in there, like mount collecting and all the skins, all this stuff still in there, all the things you do in an MMO over there, crafting, you know, tweaking your weapons, making them awesome, all that stuff. But also, oh, the other thing I liked is in the dungeons I've been in, there's lots of puzzle solving like Darksiders. So I feel like that 
DNA is in there as well, and I love the way they do that stuff in third-person action games. And so, I don't know. There's a lot here to like, and so far, players seem to be enjoying it. The reviews are okay. Most of the negative ones are mad because they changed the business model, but I think it's better in the long run, too. Uh, it's it's got to be fine because, like... If it's a free to play game, then it's gonna intentionally be withholding, and I imagine they get to not do that to people anymore. Yeah, they just let you go out play and unlock stuff, and yeah, it's a it's a it feels good to me. I prefer it, so I don't need another. You know, people don't realize how expensive it is to make a game where you're on all the time and you're all in a shared world and you're all running on these data centers and everybody's doing all this. It's oh, not man. cheap. You think it's like standard, but it just looks easy. It's not. It's expensive as shit. And they didn't see a path forward. And they've been very open about that. You can read all that on their on their blog. But um, anyway, so far, so good. And then, as awesome. I, I told you guys during the week, uh, I have I cannot stop playing Death Must Die. That game, dude. Freaking. I was already playing it. I already liked it. We've talked about it before. John's a fan. Like, uh, of all these vampire survivors, I'm pretty sure this is my, my favorite. Now. I like how you had to put the John Vouch in there. Yeah. John, <laughs> I think like, this a, is one John and Scott agree on. Yeah. So you know it's good. It must be good. Um, well, part of it is that I know that you're picky. Not picky. It's not the word I mean. But you have you have high taste in this. Like, you want If it's going to be... It needs to be demonstrably as good or better than what started this genre, I think, for John to be on board. Um, mm-hmm. And I... And we both said a number of times that we we think this one is is one of those that comes real close to the sun. It's very, it's very very good at what it's trying to do, and I love the loot system in it. And I just really gave it my all this week for some reason. I just got in the mood and unlocked like four new characters, which a couple of them I think are brand new on a patch anyway. So some of this stuff's brand new anyway. Um, it's this game is great. I just couldn't. I just wanted to keep going. Like usually, I get tired. Yeah. I'll play these games and go, "All right, one month runs enough. Good night, everybody." This is one of those where I'm like, "Okay, but next time I could do this shit different." And you know, I start thinking about all this stuff I could do, and I get, I get really, I get really hooked on it. I really like it a lot. Uh, not much new to say other than it continues to be polished nicely, and and um, I love the way it feels, and it's just a great freaking game. It's really good. Death Must Die. If you're at home going, wait a minute, you guys have talked about it before, but what kind of game is it? It's like Vampire Survivors, but just kind of taken up a notch. The the art... You're more active. Yeah. It's, it, you're doing more than you normally would in Vampire Survivors. And it's like if uh, Vampire Survivors and Diablo had a had a baby. Yeah. Like you're you're equipping loot. You're, you're doing things like that. There's also a little Hades in there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, with, with the gods that show up and give you boons and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they so. talk to you and stuff. They're clearly borrowing from a few sources and I think doing a pretty adept job at doing that. Um, the thing I like uh, about the loot system versus, say, Halls of Torment, which I also was complimentary about, Halls of Torment is very rude about r- uh, loot. <laughs> it, does, <laughs> it does shit like, oh, you picked up a purple and a couple of orange items? Those look awesome. Well, I hope you don't die. Because you won't be taking those back unless you live somehow and you have to... The whole point of this game is you're going to die a lot. That's what these games are. You're supposed to die, be better, put some points in things, go back, figure it out, do a better run, earn more stuff. That game was rude to you about that stuff. This game, it is not. When you die, whatever loot you picked up on that fight, it is in your bags. And you get to go back and some of it won't even equip for you. But the other characters can use it. So you put it in the stash, and then the stash is accessible by all the characters, and they can all go out there and, you know, pick and choose or whatever. I can sell the stuff that sucks and buy new things that, that I don't have yet, and give me just a little stat increase for the next run. Like there, that part of it is much more faithful to Diablo than Halls of Torment. Halls of Torment just it, it has this idea that it needs to be difficult upon difficult. It's like. These games are already kind of hard. You're getting swarmed. You're doing all this stuff. Hey, what if we made it worse by having you pick up something cool, giving you the dopamine of finding a rad thing? Oh, you can't take it back. And even if you do take it back, the guy has to identify it or whatever Deckard Cain bullshit he does. I hate it. Compared to this system, I mean, this has ruined that other game for me. And I thought they were doing a pretty good job 
Like combat feels good in that game, but this game is like the full package. I really like it. So anyway, I would highly recommend Death Must Die. It's so good. It's good. Like, uh, you know, I would say probably my second or third favorite of these types of games. Um, probably my favorite of the more active one where you're doing more than just moving moving your character around where mm-hmm. you're actually occasionally pushing buttons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're if you're looking for a very passive one, I still say Vampire Survivors is your best bet. Um, it's still number one in my opinion, but... Uh, if you're looking for something a little more active, uh, Death Must Die is really, really solid. And it's one of the only ones of these, that, well, one of the only ones of these that I also think is really good, where it feels like the characters are actually animating and doing the thing. Like, mm-hmm. as much as I love the Deep Rock Galactic Survivor one, um, it doesn't change the fact that bullets are just kind of shooting out of my body. And yeah. That's... That seems a little weird once you start to get to a level of fidelity with the graphics. It's like, oh, I'm just shooting little circles out of me. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Uh, This you (laughs) you actually see sword swings and whatnot, and uh, like the animation and look of the game is just really yeah. And it's a very it's a very uh, complete look. Like they've they've gone for a style and and it it's consistent. Like I I, Vampire Survivors for all of its gameplay brilliance is ugly as shit in my opinion. I just cannot get past how ugly it is. And for some people, that's the vibe they want out of that game. This game has like a unified vision for what things should look like, and it's consistent across the board. Everything animates nicely. Music's cool. Uh, I feel like, the, oh, the other thing I like is the upgrades fe- always feel, feel chunky, like sizable. It isn't just a small increase. Like, you now have a 2% increase of, of uh one thing or whatever it's more like you were hitting for 200 with that you are now hitting for 800 and you're just like well hell yeah let's go and pretty soon you're going to need more but it doesn't matter you feel powerful for a minute and that's i don't know they're hitting that real well so anyway worth checking out it's pretty cheap i think it's like 10 bucks is all right i think i don't have to look it up still on early access but they've got to be close because it's really polished um, and then I just cracked open. I got enshrouded finally. Everybody was like, Sky, you should play enshrouded. Come nice. check it out. Yeah. Because we talked about it last week and who had played it and Bo had paid, played a little bit, but it wasn't. I think you were like, well, I'd rather wait for 1.0 in this case. Or I think I'm like, yeah, I think I'm like got 10 hours in it or something small like that. Well, Shroud. this game is, I can see why people like it. Hours. I've barely cracked it. I'm maybe two and a half hours, but it's, I can already tell there's some things I really like about it. I like the yeah. def- I like the deformation of the land. The voxel stuff is really cool. Um, I like that every time I go back to my little home base, which I can freely teleport to anytime I need to, unless I'm in combat. Uh, as soon as I touch my my bench, all my stuff that has been worn down to a nub because I was out fighting or whatever is immediately repaired. Like, there's just some quality of life stuff where I'm not constantly going, oh, shit, that razor's down to nothing. I better build another one. Oh, I'm out of wood. Shit. Let's go get some wood. It's not like that. You have other options. It feels yeah, so it's not really a, it's not a real survival game. Sounds like a convenience game to me. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. You're not wrong. It feels like a game that is more of the RPG than it is the other thing that it's also yeah, the being. Em- the emphasis is on the combat and exploration and not as much on the, the building side of things yeah and i think doesn't make it bad i'm just joking about that part no i know but it it does make it different and and from what i can tell just looking off into the distance there's a ton of stuff in this world that i want to go get to like i can just see things way off in the distance and go it's not a random world it's this one's a static like adventure world right it's so you know you uh that's not a bad thing but it's like a big multiplayer adventure that's one of the reasons why i like haven't played it too much because it feels like this is a with friends game might be better with friends feels a little empty oh well, the, that's the other cool thing is if you start a private server that is just you on your off offline save yeah. i didn't know this when i started it but when you do one of those the next time you log in it'll ask you again do you want to take what you're doing and make it public or do you want to keep it private oh i'll stay private okay cool uh oh you played private or you played publicly with a couple of friends uh next time you launch it what do you want to do you want to keep it private or go back to you know you can just move it around it doesn't it's not you're not stuck with separate saves I really like that a lot. Um, I don't know. I can just I can tell they're up to something cool here, so I'm going to uh, keep fiddling about with it. 
Uh, it runs like ass on Steam Deck, not because uh, it's <laughs> graphically... Like, Elden Ring runs beautifully there, so it isn't a problem with what you can show. It's They just have not optimized, and they're, it's probably not a priority for them right now. That's fine. But it runs great on my PC and looks real, na- real nice. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's a, neat. It's a good one, but uh, the policy with these is I'm waiting to launch for a lot of these because you already spend a lot of hours in them early, and then you still don't get the, the whole game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have I have 300 hours in Valheim, <laughs> and I have not. You know, I, I can't. I've played it too much. I can't play it right now, so I'm waiting till 1.0. So you haven't even tried the new biomes that are in that yet? No, it's just because there's lots of games to play, right? Like if I'm going to devote another 50 to 100 hours now, mm-hmm. you know, then I'm going to want to take a break and that kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Combat's also quite good uh, for a game like this. Uh, I love arrows and bows, and I don't like how they fire, but apparently that's a common feeling, and they, they are addressing it, whatever that means. So early access, you know what that means for most players, so get in there if you want. Or wait till it's out, but Enshrouded seems neat. John, you have entered into a vast scientific experiment known as the Dragon Age experiment, and I'd like to know how that's going. Uh, a lot less gameplay than you would think for a series <laughs> that has three games out in it. Um, yeah, so uh, Dragon Age has been a uh, hot topic in the gaming community lately, and I decided to go down a rabbit hole. I mentioned this last week when I was like, man, I kind of want to play Inquisition again, but I don't know if I should just go back and play Dragon Age Origins again, and if that would lead to Dragon Age 2 and then Inquisition, or, or what I should do exactly. And so I started with Origins. I installed it. Uh, I got it up and running. I was excited. And it is the game I was talking about when I talk about games that are older but still more modern than a lot of what we dub classics uh that just we have kind of landed on a control scheme and style and look and feel for these games and maybe it's just that i'm playing it too close to baldur's gate 3 which feels very natural and good uh i had a very hard time getting back into origins mm, um it's and old. i still i love that game i love the look of it i love the sound of it uh it's got amazing score but from a control perspective i'm like whew, uh mm. it, this doesn't feel modern anymore and i was having a hard time getting into it and i was like am i really gonna play through this is the one i know the most this is the one i've beaten the most times like am i gonna spend that much time wrangling these controls or am i gonna move forward so i said you know what let's let's stop here also worth noting part of this experiment was watching a a damn near three hour lore background video on the dragon age franchise now that doesn't cover any of the events of the video game that is pure backstory lore and i'm going to give them a shout out it's a youtube channel called wizards and warriors um it is maybe the best lore video I have ever seen on YouTube. Mm. It was presented very clearly. It was presented really well. And uh, it was fantastic. Um, I felt like I understood things quite clearly when I was done with it. And then I was mad that they didn't try to cover the events of the games, which I understand you make big choices in the game. So it's very hard to say like, well, here's what happened when things can vary so wildly, but I was looking for a reminder summary that, uh, could be presented in as concise a way. Um, But anyway, I said, okay, well, let's try Dragon Age 2. Uh, I watched kind of a a decent story summary for Dragon Age 1. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's try Dragon Age 2. And Dragon Age 2, speaking of things that have not aged particularly well, is a game clearly designed to be played better with controller, but the PC version has zero controller support. Whoa. Oh, this is back when they... This is the time when EA was also putting out, like... uh... What was it? Mass Effect 2, amazing controller support, not available on PC, right? Kind of the same problem. Uh, I think 2 might have had controller support, maybe, but 1 definitely did not until they remastered it. Maybe 2 was the same way. But yeah, it was definitely an era where Bioware was like, 
People don't want to use controllers on the PC. They want to use the mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Um, and no, this game, this game was not designed for a mouse and keyboard, and it's it plays like shit trying to <laughs> play with a mouse and keyboard. Um, so I started it up and uh, very quickly went, oof, there's a reason I never played the PC version of this, because I have beaten Dragon Age 2, but I beat it on, uh, you know, either playstation or xbox or something yeah and uh it it did not play well on pc so once again i looked up a lore video and i i tweeted this i'm gonna say this i don't think this is controversial if you really think about it but uh i want to just give a shout out to dragon age 2 this game is considered by most the worst of the Dragon Age video games, it feels like. It feels like the one that you can say, oh yeah, it's the bad one, and you won't get a lot of pushback on it. Mm. I think if Bioware had had more time, if they weren't being pressured to put a game out super fast and completely reinvent what that series was in the form of like a Mass Effect-style video game, if they could have actually really made a proper sequel to Origins, or even if it went the route of a more action-y game. I don't, uh, but just like clearly that was the way they went and they spent more time and money. I think Dragon Age 2 might be what we consider one of, if not Bioware's best video game ever made. Jeez Louise, that's some high praise about a potential future or an alternate timeline, I guess. From a story perspective, Dragon Age 2 is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It takes place over about a decade in time. Your actions in the prologue affect chapter one, affect chapter two, affect chapter three. It takes really bold like stances on, you know, like, hey, we're we're gonna present like Bioware is well known for like their moral choices being, you know, do you wanna save the box of kittens or do you wanna drown them for some reason? Like, they, it's real black and white. <laughs> they don't have a lot of nuance to it. That's why people tend to like KOTOR 2, is it, it offered a level of gray that people appreciated. Mm-hmm. I think Dragon Age 2 did a better job of saying, like, hey, you might be, hey, I think mages are, are mistreated. We need, to, we need to love mages. But then having mages do really dark shit throughout that entire story so you get a clear picture of what what was terrible about them. Um, and I think it, if it had more time, I think it could have really done that story better and been a better game for it. And I think we would look back on it and go, wow, that's one of the best narratives they ever told. Wow. Um, they take a bold choice of like spoilers for Dragon Age 2, everybody. Uh, one of your party members commits a severe act of what would be terrorism. And you don't have a way to stop him from doing it. doesn't matter how much you romance that man. He's going to do it. Um, <laughs> and I, That's what happens when you get your I, th- I <laughs> think it is a, I think it is a bold decision to, uh, to say that, no, we created a character whose conviction and belief in this thing is stronger than anything else that you can do uh, for, you know, for him or convince him otherwise. And I think that that's, a strong decision. Now, whether they handled it great in the game, I think that's where it starts to get murky. I think it's an interesting arc to look at and direction to take. Um, so learning about Dragon Age 2 was really cool, especially because I didn't have to play it because it did not play well <laughs> on the PC. Yeah. Um, so I started up Inquisition, mm, part three of okay. this uh, experiment. Here comes the and- gameplay, right? This is where you really yeah. sunk it in. Claws Even in. Inquisition yeah. feels real dated, you guys. It feels like a action game. Or it feels like a RPG, a slow tactical RPG that wants really hard to be an action game, but it's worried its friends won't talk to it anymore if it <laughs> overcommits. Um, <laughs> All right. And it, as a result, it feels a little confused. Now, I might be able to play this one. Uh, I've, I've sunk a little bit of time in it, which I really want to because I want to play the Trespasser DLC that everybody says is so good um, prior to the next Dragon Age coming out. Uh, because the end result of this experiment, the, the grand thing that I've taken away from all of this, is that the lore in that world is really interesting and really cool. Um, I think that 
you know, the games have been a little all over the place, a little inconsistent. Um, I think, you know, even even the people who make it seem a little confused as to what the series should be. Uh, I actually think for whether you personally, and that includes me as somebody that really only likes Origins, um, whether it ends up being for me or certain other people, you know, that, that'll be what it'll be. But I kind of hope Veilguard is successful for what it is, and maybe they can isolate it and finally say, here's what a Dragon Age game is. Yeah, um, and that would be nice. And maybe if it can be a big enough success... Uh, it would be really cool if they could, you know, bring back some of the previous games in that style. If they find a way to make a hit out Ooh, of it, oh, that'd be um, a great! I would love that. I mean, I don't know if they've got the appetite for it, but that would be so cool. I would love that. Because I mean, in a world where everybody's getting updates and remasters, I, I don't know how you would ever do it with Dragon Age because Dragon Age feels like three completely different video games. Yeah, which is part of its um, problem, right? The inconsistency yeah. of it all. Yeah. And I, I think that's why part of the reason why it's so hard for me to hate on Veilguard too much, because while yes, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, "What is this? A hero brawler?" Like, at the same time, what is the identity of Dragon Age? It's been three very, very different games with the same lore behind it. So, who who ultimately knows? Um, so I again, I'm rooting for that game's success. I don't know if I would bet on it. I will probably play it and try it, especially yeah. with how interested I am now in in the lore. Um, but the end result of this Dragon Age experiment was I give the YouTube video a ten out of ten, and then middling results outside of the YouTube videos that I watched. Wow. Um, but uh, we'll see. I'm gonna see if I can stick with uh, Inquisition. I was surprised I liked Bald Elf when he first showed up. I was like, I remember hating this guy. So far, he seems fun, but I haven't gotten to the part where he's just moody and complaining every time you talk to him. Oh, wow. Uh, real quick here, just for side note. Um, Dragon Age Inquisition, fastest run time for a speed run, 25 minutes, 14 seconds. Oh, well, why haven't I finished it? Though? Yeah, what's your, yeah, what's what's your deal? You? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And get if you, with it. If you do that run but get every dragon killed three years ago, one person has this record for an hour, 18 minutes. So anyway, I should never look at these because they always make me feel like games I'm buying aren't worth the 60 bucks I'm spending because someone beat it in an no, hour. And I know it's not the same. They're not playing it. That's like, right? that's like buying Mad Max for your road and starting it two minutes before credits roll. <laughs> like That's what they're doing. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Just skipping all the really key parts, and I just need yeah, to remember like that. The, the journey is the reward, not you know finishing it. Yeah, I just got to remember that more. Well, John, uh, Godspeed on Dragon Age. Uh, Dawn Trail, it's coming still, and that's like a week, right? Or, yeah, yeah if you got early access, I think it's next week. Um, oh, yeah, you're not playing Shadow of the Earth Tree. You're, like, doing the, I, the whole run of Dragon Age and Final Fantasy, like, next week? Jesus. Yeah. Well, okay, the Dragon Age <laughs> got pushed to the side for Elden Ring. Good thing you don't have a family. There's a <laughs> decent chance Elden Ring is going to get pushed aside for Final Fantasy, and uh, I think my family's going to go on vacation so they can get out of the way of Final Fantasy. Oh, they're taking off, um, so you're you're the just it's just you. That's they cool. might. We'll see. We've got. Uh, Wait, we've got a <laughs> crazy. It, so, it sounds less like they're taking a vacation and you're sending them on vacation. <laughs> well, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hey guys, uh, Disneyland seems pretty cool this well, time of year. What <laughs> if you? Michigan. Hey, guys, what if you? You know how we have a house? Yeah. What if you weren't in it for a couple days? <laughs> yeah. so, I think wild? I'm next spring. I'm sending my wife and daughter to. I'm not sending them, but they're going to Korea. No, you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said I'm sending. They're going to Korea, like, wait, and they're like, why don't... In a more charitable it's, way. It's like, do you want to go to Korea? And they're like, well, I've been to Korea, but I could go again, but I, I think that I... You're I, not going to go to Korea? I'd rather stay here and play video games by myself oh, yeah. all the time. You can't yeah. tell me that. You better go to Korea. John and I know... I've been, so it's not like in, you know... You've been again. Come on. <laughs> I've been <short>. again. <laughs> Finnegan's. <laughs> I'm getting my pod potties in a bunch, but I I want 
I want Wait, th- this is John and I. Are, you, do your family want you to go, or you like who? How, well, at first details. they said we should all go, and I said, well, it's really just you and Carter that want to go, right? And she goes, well, we, you know, I've never been, and she's been. Kim, no, there are two other hosts on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no wants to go. Hey, Kim, we found a we found a a middle ground. I'm still not going, but Bo's going to be joining you in Korea. She would not say no to that because she likes Bo. She thinks yeah. both. But she thinks. Yeah, you're John. just the most lovable uh, creature that I work with. I don't know what the not creature, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean creature is pretty good word for it. Yeah. But John and I have this, and we have this in common. Anytime there's a thing like that, it's like, oh, so you say it might just be me getting to do what I want to do. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yep, my ears perk up every time. It's like, hey, something's going on, and there's always a discussion of like. Like this, it always so, starts are you the same way. To do to... I have to go? Is always the question I ask. It's like, I, I... hey, this is happening. Do I have to go? <laughs> I feel like that's understandable. Like, especially for like, you know, if it's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go to Hartford. <laughs> and I'm like, do I have to go to Hartford? Like, I, sure, like, sure. Yeah. But for Korea, I don't know, man. You got to go and like have some. Oh, no, that's life. even worse. You got to fly. Ugh. You got like different country things you got to figure out. Like, 14 so hour flight. It's I got so a, much I, effort. And for what? I got to poop on that flight multiple times, prob- probably, you know. I've seen mm-hmm. enough. I grew up with three Korean siblings. I'm good, man. I know. Okay, I, fine. I, okay, I, that makes sense. Because I'd be like, if I was somebody was like, you should, you want to go to Germany? I'd be like, I don't know. I've seen enough Germans. Like, <laughs> I've had enough. Yeah, Germany. I actually have to go to German. Like, I okay, maybe that <laughs> that that makes more. It, that makes uh, more sense. I'd it's like, part yeah, part of it too. It's not very interesting to me. Now there yeah, are a lot of people yeah. I know that would just jump at the chance. My thing is, I'm just not. Well, I'm not telling them not to go. Oh, no, no, exactly. Same. And and it's not, a part of it is also, it's very expensive if I join them. So part of my justification is, well, okay, there's two things going on. The world, the job I have means I need to be around a lot. I can't leave for extended periods of time. Nobody's here doing the work I was supposed to be doing. There's no vacation pay for me. So I kind of yeah, have to just they, keep they don't at have it. Twitch. Twitch is banned in Korea. Yeah, they, they don't even, like it. Yeah. Plus the internet is weird right now. But anyway, and so I, I'm just... I don't know. It's not that I don't want to. I, I don't want to pee on their parade either, so I'm happy that they want to. So so what game were you going to go while uh, Kim, Carter, and me go to Korea? <laughs> what game am I going to play? Um, yeah. I'm going to beat Elden Ring and its DLC while you guys are gone. <laughs> oh, shit. I know. Well, that means wow. I can't go either. I got to do, yeah, do shoulder bird stuff. Those got to be here to support. Yeah, you got to be. Yeah. You got to be on call. Um, but oh, we can make it work. To do too. Sorry, Kim. Filling filling up on kimchi and t- helping me with your advice. I do uh, want to go. I think at some point though, but no. Like the thing no, that everybody, because right I'm seeing chat being like, "What do you mean for what?" This is how I feel, regardless of the place. Yeah, like doesn't it doesn't care. matter if it's another country or down the street. I don't see inherent value in being someplace other than where I am. And that's I mean, not you can to watch, say that you everybody can has to agree with me on live this. And watch live StarCraft too. I, mean, I can do yeah, yeah. I I can do that at home, and I can do it in my pants. Like I don't have to <laughs> go on a big long flight to do that. I can just do that right here, right now, and I, I don't have to be around it. other people, and other people don't have to be around me. I can do it's, it in my pants. <laughs> like <it's>... Wow! <laughs> yeah, you can do it in your pants. I don't know I'm what to make saying. of that. So, I'm just anyway. saying, there's like, there's, there's things to do. It's, it's not a bad destination. I'm but sure there I... are things to do. There are things to I do everywhere. But there's by... also things to do here, which I would rather be doing. Yeah, the I trick is us by not just letting Scott be good with it. So you know, fine, fair. That's John fair. and I are both. Stay we are. We are. Move it, your it, pants. It's a dichotomy. Okay, I understand it. I am, but I am a homebody introvert that talks a lot. Yeah. And it's confu- yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> it's very it's confusing to people. That's what Cor's no, most known for. Is our it's, it's confusing to people. Let me tell you my favorite thing on the planet is when there is something planned. It's a Friday thing. We're all meeting up somewhere. Three couples, movie, dinner, blah, whatever the thing is, concert, doesn't matter. And then it's all set in stone. Everything's good. And then the day before, somebody calls and goes, oh, we all got COVID or 
food poison or oh something. Oh my gosh, Scott, be careful how you say it because people are going to take that as you're happy somebody got COVID. I'm not happy they got COVID, but what? Something but the feeling happens that cancels it and you're happy right. it's canceled. Right. The reason they can't come is a varied reason. Doesn't matter what the reason is, but that cancellation is like warm, flowing water over over me it's so nice don't, don't you have to make plans to feel the warm flowing water no and then i just say up oh, i guess we're uh what pizza in a movie here at the house all right oh right yeah that sounds amazing let's do it it sounds not only does it sound amazing it sounds amazing every time and that's what i think people who are different from us don't understand is that getting pizza and watching a movie and not going somewhere is just as exciting tomorrow as it was yesterday yeah like and maybe more so it's maybe more more exciting for me yeah like yeah, I, if kim good. came in here tonight because we do have a thing tomorrow that's happening here and i'm dreading it she came in here and said ah, i got canceled we're just gonna get pizza and watch a movie or play a video game or hang out or go walking at the park or something i go oh, thank the lord on high <laughs> is what i would say yeah. oh man all right well i know I, i've said it before i will reiterate it and i will be clear as day with the situation one of my favorite things at BlizzCon is when I check out from all the people and all the hubbub and I go back to the hotel room by myself yep. and I order a Pizza Hut pizza, yep. something I can get literally anywhere, and they bring it to my hotel room and I sit in my boxers and I watch the BlizzCon stream on my computer <laughs> in my boxers in my hotel room. I could be... A, a five minute walk away from seeing it live and in person, but I am happier in boxers on a bed in a hotel room by myself. <laughs> that is more fun to me. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, yeah, that's exactly me. And people, and there are people who do not understand it. I don't have a fear of missing out. I have a joy of missing out. I have Joe, Joe, Fo, Joe, Fo, Jomo, Jomo, Joe, Fo. Jomo. How do I get Fo out of that? That's joy of. Fucking off. <laughs> <laughs> oh I like creating thing, things. Thing. I like spending my time creating things and doing things I like. And that's just it. That's all. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. It's fine. Like, I get it. I get it. But, you know, Korea is a pretty big deal. That, that's, that'd be tough to say. That. I mean, you got to do some things. Yeah, of course. Like, I get the, can the, the cancellation joy, uh, you know, or, you know, the CJ. I get the CJ. But, like, <laughs> um, there's just some stuff you got to do something, right? You, if what if you made a hundred plans in a year and cancel all the plans? Like you got to. Well, least right, you're going to have one some, of those. Work out some of those yeah. I will begrudge more than others. But if if you said to me, "Hey Scott, if you do go to Korea this fall or next spring, the whole thing's paid for, uh, hotel, food, every travel, all of it. You don't pay a dime. I'd go without without hesitation because that's a good value. Like that's something dumb to turn down." It's the best value. But when you're trying, when you're having me like, it's it's one thing to have to go do something you're not in the mood for. It's worse when you have to pay f to do a thing you're not in the mood for. Okay. It's that whole I, road I, to I always think thing. Kim would take care of a lot of it for you. If you oh, she does. And she does a great job of that. She's a great mm -hmm. organizer and, and all that. And her and, her and my daughter, Carter, they love going to shops, to the weird little consignment places, to all that. They love each other's company and they love all that stuff. And when I go to those things, I just go, eh, can I go to the hotel and watch Food Network? No, you'd, ha you'd have to go to those things because what if you'd pulled a John and just had Pizza Hut in the Korean hotel? <laughs> That's what I would do. I would prefer that. Yeah. Give me some yeah. kimchi pizza. I'm good. I'm all but, set. But maybe, but maybe you'd go see some StarCraft or something. Or yeah. Something just for you. Like, you know, I don't know what. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. only thing I know that to do is like uh, go see StarCraft in... I think they have like coffee shops there too. That's all. Well, sure. And it is worth it's worth noting that in this story about BlizzCon, I still go to BlizzCon. I could do the hotel thing at home. I do get something out of it. It's not that there's nothing to be gained from it, or I wouldn't go at all. Um, but I do need my breaks from it. Yeah. I can only go pretend to be an extrovert for so long. <laughs> yeah. So what were you going to play instead of do the thing? That's what I, I feel we got hung up on the oh. cancellation thing just because I got excited. But Well, like, if I if they're going to, oh, I don't know. Like yeah. it's too far off to say for sure, but like what's okay. what's next spring? I don't know. Whatever's happening then. And John's going to play a week of Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. 
Yeah. Actually, I was gonna have I was gonna have a lot of time, but my son has to have a surgery, so. Oh. Oh no. Hopefully, is anything serious? Are you okay? It's it's fine. It's okay. not it's not that serious. It's I had apparently a, a fairly common surgery, but it's a surgery nonetheless. I had a I, I had a herniated something when I was his age and had to have surgery at his age, and it sucked. Yeah. I still have a scar from it. Yeah. They're way better at that shit now, though. They laparoscopic everything, and there's no scars. But I still got a big old nasty ass looking. Like if I was if I was naked in one of them, uh, like a documentary. I don't know why that would happen, but it just says naked. <laughs> They're you, like, well, Scott, this is your documentary. <laughs> you got to take off your clothes. It's not a documentary unless we show you naked. Yeah, but I always think of like I don't know what what I'm even thinking of, but some old ass documentary. But if you saw this, you'd just go, ah, yo, what happened? Like it's nasty. Yeah. Mm. But they don't do them like that anymore. So he'll be whatever I, he's got getting done. He'll be all right. Yeah, he'll be he'll be fine. It's not. I mean, I'm worried, of course. Of course, like, I can't pretend so, I'm not worried. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is common enough to where I know I shouldn't be that worried. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's that's going to keep them home for a little longer. And that is going to be around dawn trail time. So it's going to be a little hit and miss. And that's that's fine. We're going to. It's it's a slow burn. I think I'm gonna probably stream it, so I need to get some control on when I actually play anyway. But yeah, we are coming up fast on that Final Fantasy XIV expansion. I'm so excited they released the launch trailer. I showed you. It, it looked Scott. real good. You, you yeah. said it looked good. It looked really good. Um, I have to admit, I I I was not scoffing, but I was a little bit skeptical about the graphical improvements. It's it's very nice. It looks real good. Yeah. It's a funny one to do graphical improvements for. Finally, time for vacation. Yeah. Because <laughs> yep. that's all it's going to be. Nothing. Everybody's just going to be like right click to get a mimosa. Ding. Level 90. I assume it's just going to be a bunch of beach volleyball. Yep. What, what's, yep. what was the weird thing? What was the meme in that game? They were like grapes that were square or something like that. What was the thing? That was, uh, that was the last expansion. Yeah, they had weird looking grapes. So they already fixed that. So that's... I saw those in game in real life. They were very. <laughs> yeah, they, no, they're still. They fix them. They still look iffy. Yeah. They actually, there was a quest. Uh, I think in the last patch where they called specific attention to the grapes. Really. Yeah. I love somebody that. made some comment about um, oddly shaped grapes or something like that. So. Let's see. It's, uh, I'm trying to find the old picture. Oh, it's in Final Fantasy. It was in the Final Fantasy 16 quest. Yeah, there's definitely some part where uh, they they have poked fun at the grapes themselves in game. So it's been fun. The uh, my favorite version of this was in Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, the first Sony game on PS4. And yeah, there's the grapes. Yeah, there's they the look grapes. like little crystals. They're so good. But in 2018, they put out that Spider Man game, and that game was beautiful. Still is. Just like, wow, look at all the detail. But somebody figured out a way to get way out in the ocean and capture one of the seagulls out there. And the sea <laughs> yeah. and the seagull was made of less polygons than this grape thing. Just like this little flat paper looking deal. That's how they get you. You're not supposed to see them up close. No. Yeah, you're not supposed to pay attention to it. You're no. not supposed to get in there and look at it, but then you do and it's like, ah, oh, it's fun. Yeah. And uh yeah, the grapes are particularly they they updated it, but it still looks pretty much like that except now it looks like it's got a little like tumor on the side. Yeah, the one It's looking... just like slightly less a crystal now. Let's see. What is this format? Who uses a VIF for a freaking format. Stop with the graphic format. What's a VIF? Jeez. I don't even know. I don't even like. I'm, I it's have to convert very it all. Important format. But that looks mm. like the new one. It's it's a little better. It's still pretty much just a textured polygon. Is that cousin. it? I thought they did. I don't think they look like. Is that, that not Maybe. it? Maybe uh, it is, but I don't know. It looks weird. Well, it's definitely not. Let's see. It's not as good. The no. other one has character. And with yeah. how much they love crystals in Final Fantasy, just have grapes that look like crystals. Maybe they engineered them that way. Oh, yeah. Lightbringer, come forth and partake of the crystal grapes. I can hear I it. I guess they're just supposed to be a bunch. Just Oh, I found the new ones. Surface. So these are the new ones, John, just different lighting. So here's, I'll put this up. This is a, a lady standing next to him, but they're just a little bit more like lumpy. Yeah, uh, they're just mushy. They still don't look good. No. I don't want to eat them. <laughs> they just—they're slightly more lumpy. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she and looks the, concerned about she it. She looks sad. That's how I felt when I looked at them. I was like, I liked the other ones. Yeah, better. <laughs> she looks very concerned. 
All right. Uh, that is it for... Oh, no, Bo, tell me about... Uh, you've gotten back into Farthest Frontier, and I have been tempted lately just because it feels like there's been enough time for them to do a bunch, and I haven't checked back yeah. in. I own this game. So how is Farthest Frontier going? Sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> Mute it. It's all right. Perfect timing, then. Bo, how is it? And he just disappears just off the screen and goes completely <laughs> quiet. He's had like a big sneeze thing going. Sorry. Right. Hopefully, I'm, it's not a second one. Um, yeah, it's the uh, same old game, uh, but they've uh, they. I think the last thing that I heard that they had added was like military stuff. Like they definitely changed the way you do combat units uh, mm. for the better. Um, I think there's more styles you can pick between pikemen and infantry, light infantry. Uh, they have horseback dudes too, which are much better for fighting the hordes off. Um, depending on where you would have dropped off, there's some other new stuff like religious things that can change up your gameplay, make your town better. But it's uh, pretty much the same old farthest frontier you knew. It's just uh, okay. I got in just to really quickly check it out, and I got hooked. And I started making, uh, you know, a bigger and bigger city. I'm I'm up to like 900 in population, which really slows down the game to about 15 frames. One oh. of the things they are working right now is like, shit, in-game optimization because they do. It is really a simulation of what the entire population is doing. So, as your population gets more and more, the the game does slow down to a crawl. So, um, you know, they're working on this stuff, but it was fun. I just kind of got hooked and played a lot more than I anticipated I would because you know. Once your city gets complex and you try moving things around, it can just take time to get those changes in place. Like I put my my city hall on top of a mountain and carved out the mountain to make it hard for the uh, enemies to get at them and put a bunch of like uh, tower defense towers up, mm. which is hilarious. But uh, Boy, I sure love tower took, defense, so that'll be good. It took a lot of hours. Well, I mean, this game, the raiders attack your village. It's not really tower defense. It's just they just, want your gold. They want you your know? shit. So you sure. Yeah. yeah. You can play without um, it, but I... I don't know. I, I don't know what I'll do yeah. when I finally play it for real. But I have a number of games like this to play on the list, but a lot of them I want to wait for 1.0. I guess that means I should play Fable them some more. But I oh just, yeah, this same. Is, I need that this, itch scratched. I've been trying. I like to... this the, the the flavor of this one. Like I think mm. it's uh, very much. It's very much. It's not uh, trying to be. Um, you know, like a combat thing or try to put anything kind of weird on it. It's just strictly the city builder is sort of in its purest form. And uh, I like it. It's good. It's the Grim, so, what's their name, people? Gr uh, Grim Dawn people. Yeah, it's the Gr Crate Entertainment. Crate, that's right. Yep. Um, yeah, no, it, it's really good. I think the, the soundtrack's phenomenal. I think it, the way the game plays is phenomenal. Um. It's a softer version of Banish, so it's like less punishing in some regards, which is great. Yeah, and it's just a good time waster, you know. Uh, it's up there with Timberborn. Uh, Timberborn, Banished, Farthest Frontier, kind of my faves. Yeah, um, you know, and we'll see how Manor Lords goes, but I haven't really, haven't really gone back to it yet. So, yeah, I haven't heard. To, it kind of went from everyone's talking about this to nobody's talking about it. And I realize there's just a ton of games and everyone's radar is full of a million things, but yeah, it, that's pretty much it. Like you just need to sit down and get hooked. I guess I didn't play long enough in Man Lords where I was like really hooked into what's going on. I think yeah, that's what usually what a good city builder does is like, Oh yeah, let me just build this and build this. And then you're really invested in the success of the thing you're making. And that's when you get hooked. So sure. Sure. I, just didn't play far. I was still figuring out mechanics. I think. Where I was playing, so. Well, the good news, or the news, there's no good news, but the news is we're going to take a break now that we've talked about all oh, the games we played. There's one of oh, the games ahead. I played this week that's yeah. worth a mention. Sure. We have to talk about it long, but I played uh, Wolfenstein, The New Order. Oh, that's a good game. I like that game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was on my Doom Eternal kick, and I was just like, oh, let me play another uh, game. And so I started, I was, like, I was thinking maybe I'd play all the Wolfensteins. Yeah, yeah. But I got, you know, I got other shit to do, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those new ones are so That's good, though. Good everything up to yeah. the one with the two daughters is a kind of a bad game, but everything up to that was... was it's starting cool. to feel surprisingly a little dated. There's some clunky aspects that I yeah. would like expect to be better, but it's still fun, and it's... Yeah. The vibe is good, right? It's like, I hate... You know, you're... Uh, you got a piece of shrapnel on your head, and you're, you know, uh, uh, invalid for like 14 years, and then all of a sudden, Nazis start killing all the patients in the, in the psych ward, and when he, the Nazi comes to you, all of a sudden, you snap out of your you know, 
uh, reverie, and you're just like Nazi scum, and yep. you stab the guy in the neck repeatedly. It has one of the most disturbing like melee combat things because if they get up to melee, they just stab you like this, yeah. and you just stab them back like this, and it's just stab, 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 and it's like oh, like wow. it's really awful. Um, but uh, yeah, game's good. Um, real quick, I just was I, I keep forgetting that these are the same guys making the new Indiana Jones game, and what's weird about that Indiana Jones game that's coming out game pass and xbox and i don't know where else pc um is that they don't have a date for it it just says 2024 but all my social media stuff that i watch so on tiktok youtube shorts anywhere where i'm just like popping something open instagram they're all running ads for this thing as if it's coming out like tomorrow i don't understand there's no date but really let's just weird. advertise the shit out of it it's really weird um, but I'm looking forward well, to maybe it. Maybe this will be one of those things that uh, you know that we don't have to wait too much longer for. Hopefully, it looks good. That game it does look good. The game looks good. And yeah, like the, the story in the Wolfenstein games is like it's fun. Like I, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of get sucked up into it. They got great characters and stuff. It's, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, a couple of more news stories, some quick texts, and uh, then we'll send people home where they belong. Uh, but that'll be in about five minutes. So chat. I'll put up a timer for you. For the rest of us, let's all go pee or whatever, and we'll be right back. All right. After these messages, we'll be right back. Let's see. Probably ought to turn the recorder back on. And we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Hey, how do you feel about a dear Martha? I know how I feel. Oh, no, we don't. Did we do that first? Oh, unrelated. Have you seen uh, yeah, these videos of Taylor Swift's boogers? Uh, no. Tell me oh, more. Boogers. That sounds terrible. So, so apparently she was doing a concert while she was like really I guess sick or something like that, and she just had like giant boogers that she wiped off and held in her hand, all of them, which is really awesome <laughs> for everyone to see. Oh, I love yeah, this yeah. headline. The headline is Taylor Swift struggles to shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, wiping snot that on her. That person wrote that tour. headline and did a lap around their house. They were like, "Yeah, yeah,", yeah. <laughs> they just ran around the whole place. I can't believe I'm going to look at this. I am going to look at this. Oh, it was something else. They were like massive boogers. It was cool. Ew. <laughs> and she's trying to like make it part of the show where she's like doing the moves and then wiping it on her thing. Yeah, this is like, yeah, this is a good one here. Here's a link. Oh, I'm going to hate this, aren't I? Uh, there you go. It's on YouTube. Okay, hold on. I know, but it's going to gross me out. But what will it do to my algorithm? Okay, this it's is It's just her. the first uh, little bit. Uh, oh, it's hanging. <laughs> oh, this is... Oh, the poor thing. Oh, the poor thing. I mean... <laughs> that's gross, dude. I mean, the slow motion one where she just clearly just going like this and then holding it in her hand. Uh, it's yeah. leaving a string. It leaves a string. I hate it. Yeah. That's horrifying. Well, I mean, I imagine mean, having is, that in front of millions of people. You know, just like it's hilarious. Yeah. As someone who has always had a real grounded look at celebrities because they're just like us, this is your ultimate evidence right here. This is you're right. It brings it brings her right back down to where we are. I like her anyway, but I don't. I'm I'm not even a big. I don't. I'm not like a fan of her music, but I I I think Taylor yeah, Swift's got, a, got it going here. on. We're all human and that stuff happens. It was just, it was pretty epic booger. And that's why I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, this is humanizing her. I like that. So Swifties, I'm good. Don't come after me. None of this was negative. I just want to point that out. Have, have you had run-ins with the Swifties? Because they'll kill you. They'll cut a, a bitch, as they I say. Just, I was going through a, a boot. Like I'm, I was like, I was kind of concerned maybe something was coming out of my nose right now. It reminded me. You know, I'm good. <laughs> I got, I'm good. My I'm wife good. is yeah, my sure. wife is always like so quick to tell me. So if I got even just a little, we call it. She'll say you got a bug hanging. That's how she'll say it. And yeah. I'll go where? She'll go right there. And I'll go here and I'll do like this. And she goes still there, like this. Nope, still yeah. there. We'll have this conversation for like twenty get a minutes. Kleenex. Yeah, because what's the best? What happens if you do this and then a big stringy piece of booger cheese like is attached? <laughs> you know, you go put it in a tissue. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Away. Just start with start with the tissue. Why do we do the hand thing first? When do we can go get a tissue? That's a good point. See if we can resolve the issue without waste. Or even better, the person who's pointing out could be nice and bring you. Tissue. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Tech Tony oh. Two in the chat wants to know how did we get here? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Because I got a, I got a feeling like something nasty is coming out of my nose. That's I'm sorry. That's how we got here, and it's okay. We got here however we got here. Oh my gosh, my screen just went nuts. Remember we talked earlier in the show about how when uh, we're unbunching our pants, I would announce to the world. Yeah, that doing that. Your, yeah, your so. putties or your uh, potties. There we go. <laughs> Tell us about those putties. putties. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. Where are we? News. I know. News. Wait. Now we're on no, Dear, Dear Martha. Martha. Oh, Dear Martha. Hey, y'all. It's time <laughs> like for Dear Martha. Like, I know. <laughs> I know right where we are. Um, we got another one of these Dear Martha suggestions. So John's been improving these. He doesn't have previous access to the thing we're going to say. And today's no different. Uh, Shiros in our chat room or in our Discord said, uh, Dear Martha, why did it take so long for a Legend of Zelda game to have Zelda as the protagonist? That's the question. Okay. Um, and you can treat it as an answer or just to address the whole, you know how to do this. It's John's forte. So John, today's subject, Lady Zelda protagonist, finally in a Legend of Zelda game. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can do that. You feel good? You all right? Yeah, it? let's do it. All right, let's here. make Nintendo people mad. Here. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm excited now. My dearest Martha, I write to you because I think a crime occurred. It's alarming. You're telling me that we are going to play a Legend of Zelda game without the titular Zelda as the main character? They're going to make it some girl? <laughs> What's next, Martha? You're going to tell me that I'm going to play a Metroid game without the world-acclaimed bounty hunter Metroid running around? <laughs> next thing you'll tell me is that's a woman in that suit. Offensive. Woke. <laughs> Bullshit. Keep politics out of my game. <laughs> Yours in this life and the next. Homelander fan 37. <laughs> <laughs> that may be my favorite one you've ever done. That was amazing. You took all mm -hmm. the stupid discussion around this kind of shit and made it perfect. That's amazing. All right. Well done. I don't know how you top that. Whew. Uh, thank you, Churros, by the way, that uh, for making that possible. That went well. Now this. Uh, the Elden Ring DLC is previously mentioned, getting raves, getting 10s and 9.5s and all that. Just thought it'd be worth mentioning. Seems like your money will be well spent there. A lot of people are like, yeah, it's uh, it should be called full-on expansion, not DLC. It's a, it's a huge add-on, and people love it. Also in the news, NVIDIA has overtaken Microsoft to become the world's most valuable company, period. Uh, Done. Not just in gaming, not just in electronics, not anything. It's the most valuable company in the world. And they did it on the backs of making all the chips for all the AI bullshit that's going on. Uh, and crypto. Crypto is part of it. But um, they make chips for all that stuff. And specifically in the AI department, they are the go-to right now on AI capable chips. And it's because the architecture of these chips are designed specifically to do that. So this isn't about the 3090s or the 4090s or 80s selling like hotcakes. That's, that is no longer their main business. They'll keep in gaming, I'm sure, but their real money is coming from the AI future that we are all engaged in. So there's that. And then finally, Sony uh, pulled its rewards program. They're ending it. So if you have space points to spend, you better go spend them on the PlayStation Store However, there's works. I assume it's similar to Microsoft's. Uh, I don't use either, so I don't even know how Microsoft's work, but the rewards program going away. You guys have any points in PlayStation that you need to spend? I don't know. I don't know. Nope. If they gave me points, they can keep them. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I have any. Yeah. I don't think I don't think this is well, I think there was a time there where on the heels of achievements and everything else that was happening with modern gaming. I think, I think everybody felt like, well, you got to have a rewards program. You just have to have one, but I'm not so sure you do. I don't know how many people care about this. So. I mean, if you care, you care. I don't even know what the rewards points program was. So I, it's hard for me to have an opinion. I don't even know what it is. I've got so much steam points, whatever they're called 
It's the same idea. They have. Oh, I know what those are. Yeah. (laughs) I wish they did more. Like every now and then I accidentally click my profile and I go, oh, it's flashy. I wish there was a way that I saw it better. Yeah. But I have so many points in Steam that it's like, meh. Yeah, no, it's 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 ridiculous. I have so many. (laughs) I wish I could convert it. Like, let me do. I feel like a kid with a ton of tickets at the arcade and I don't know whether to get the plastic spider ring or the freaking. You know, whatever dumb other thing I want. How many points do you guys have? I have 292,000. Oh, my I don't gosh. know. I can't open Steam right now because if I do, it's going to try and download a gigabyte update to Elden Ring. And I don't want to I don't want to do that while I'm using the bandwidth. Where do you how do you okay. find this? Where do I see it? Uh, Let's go to press store. Uh, just hover over to the store and then go to point shop. Oh, point shop. Here we go. All right. And I have. Uh, uh, where's my total? Up right, five hundred and eighty-six thousand <laughs> and sixteen of these things, uh-huh. and uh, I don't know what to spend like, them on. Why can't I convert most that to dollars? Most thing is like three thousand. So like, I because I've gone in and spent down. I'm like, I need to use my points, and I get yeah, bored. I'm just like, oh my god, I've spent like a hundred k, and I'm been two hours. Like, I just need to move on. Oh, I should buy this Hades Steam Deck startup movie. I think it also yeah, works. You for- should. The startup movies. There you go. Startup cool. movies seem like a good way to, to yeah. spend your, your points. I'm going to do that. Okay. But the point is, um, I, I can't. Why can't I convert this to money and buy Elden Ring? <laughs> That's what I want to do. If yeah, they exactly. told me today, every single of your, every one of your 586,000 points will go to Elden Ring if you spend it right now, I just do that. Yep. Like right now. One game. That's all I'm asking. Steam, Gabe Newell. Let's see what my points are. I just I just got here. I have seven hundred and seventeen thousand eight hundred. Jeez, jeez, you got me beat. That's because you finish more games than I do. Mine's just. I am known for my finishing. Yeah, you're a good good, strong finisher. John is. I don't even understand. Like some of these collections make no sense. One of them is the Capitalism and Economy Fest. Oh yeah. I don't know. Celebrating capitalism and economy. Oh, it's probably like uh, tycoon type games or something. Yeah, maybe. maybe, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm just like I never even heard of that fest before. So yeah, they're coming up with a fest for everything. Oh, what's today's deal? Fossil fuel two. What is this? That's a horror game. Won't be buying that. Fossil fuel. Yeah, it's man. There are so many animated avatars in Steam that are just implied sex with anime girls. Yeah, oh, yeah. people are into it, dude. Because you got all this, you got all them dirty games in here, you know. Yeah, all the dirty games. Um. Okay, well, there's that. This is the, still so dumb. I get into Steam and now I'm like going, "What's in the top sellers? How much <laughs> shit can I buy right now?" <laughs> and I just I noticed. Know. You guys want to hear my total my money? Check out my library today. As of today, whoops, I have two thousand two hundred ninety four games. Many, many are codes, all right, review codes and things. But still, that's a lot. I should have more points. They should, I am such a good customer here. They should give me Elden Ring. All right. I have a lot less games, but that's because they frequently forget there's two other people on the show. <laughs> yep. For everyone, Dev, that forgets that, it's a, it's a point for me. Every time you send core only one code, two other co-hosts go hungry. Scott gets his wings, and they don't. Uh, all right. 943 games. That's what this says, and I'll believe it. I do, too, and you probably beat more of those than I have. So, if I had to guess. All right, it's time for your feedback. That's a good question. Uh, people call us and leave us voicemails and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, texts at this number all the time, 801-471-0462. We're going to do both of those, or two of these today, the Camus text, from Brady, who says right now his main console is a Steam Deck. He says this, hey, core gang, I have a question for John. John, are you ready? Oh, yes. My wife and Let's I go. just had a baby, and I'm looking for some good games that I can multitask, also while taking care of a newborn. Uh, without feeling too overwhelmed. Currently, I'm playing Elden Ring, and that is definitely not the game for that, but I'm making it work, especially since the DLC is coming out. So just looking for a small, fun game to play on the side. Thanks for keeping me laughing and awake at work. All of you are awesome, from Brady. And again, his Steam Deck is his main thing, so we probably can find something there. But do you have, you got any, like, the mo- as someone with the most recent infant, it's been a while for me, 
Uh, what do you what do you recommend? So the games I played, the best thing you can do, here's broad advice, and then I'll tell you specifically what I played. You're looking for stuff that is turn-based, stuff that you can very easily pause and walk away from without feeling like... You have to be ready at any point to say, my night of gaming is over, and I'm okay with this. Yeah. And so they're, turn-based is one of the easiest ways to do it, because you just have to train yourself to be okay with, that was my last turn. Now, that's hard to do as somebody who stayed up all night playing Civ. Right. Uh, that can be difficult to do, but that's where that, you know, that's what you got to figure out. And I'll say that when my son was born, uh, the games I played the most of, uh, the big one at the time, because it was fairly new, but it's also fantastic, was Loop Hero. Mm. Uh, it was a great game for this because you just go, all right, I'm going to set him on the loop. All right. Is the baby still asleep? Yep. Do that loop again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is the baby still asleep? Yep. Send another loop. And when the baby woke up, that's the end of the loops. We're going to stop for a while. Um, but I also did play Civ. Civ was kind of like my, my first attempt. Um, struggled a little bit with Civ because you do get into that addictive like, oh, but one more turn. I was just about to launch an attack on my rival. And then the baby wakes up and you're like, I can't stop. there, <laughs> And you get frustrated. Yeah. Um, but again, turn-based, very good. And uh, Final Fantasy uh, 14. I played through most of that while uh, I was a new dad. And that one was a little trickier because uh, as an MMO, it is neither turn-based nor is it a game you can pause. But the nice thing about Final Fantasy 14 is that it's very... Uh, once you get into that game, it's very clear where the divides are. You know when you're just running around turning things in. You know when you're going to be doing fights. You know when you're going into a dungeon. Now they've actually made the game where you can run with AI through dungeons, through all the dungeons in the game. So you don't have to worry about getting a group for that. Because when I played the first time before I got to where that feature was implemented, I'd play until I got to a dungeon and then go, well, I'm done for the night because... I can't risk going into a dungeon because my son might wake up and need something or I have to go to bed or, you know, whatever was going on. So now that that's there, you can just go, okay, do I think I'll have time? And if I have to abandon in the middle of the dungeon, there's no penalty for something like that. And that's that worked out really well, too. So that was a really good game uh, to go through because it's very quiet. It's very chill. Um, and he would just sit in his little bed next to me while I played Final Fantasy XIV, and he would just zonk out. And when he woke up, I'd just comfort him, give him a bottle, whatever I needed, and the game would just sit there. And, you know, if you're in a dialogue or cutscene, it would just pause. So I would say anything that allows you to quickly and easily walk away for an extended period of time that's not going to drive you crazy is a good game experience. But it sounds like they're looking for a small game on the side of... Elden Ring, so Loop Hero would be. My yeah, I would co-sign the Loop Hero idea mainly because I owned it already and tried it on Steam Deck, which is where he'll be playing it. <clears throat> and you might think, wait, that's like a mouse and keyboard focused game, and it was, but they added controller support and therefore Steam Deck verification to it, and it's done brilliantly. It's very good, and it will not feel fiddly or weird. It's it's extremely smart the way they did it, and uh, can confirm that while I was watching, I was in charge of a five year old and a 18 month old not long ago and that's what i played on the couch while the little one watched bluey and the older one sat in my lap and was fascinated by going around a loop and then fighting a dude and he'd say those are bad guys i'm like yep they're bad guys we're gonna beat those bad guys he loved watching that so i don't know those i think i can't even think of a better recommendation loop hero is amazing in this form and you can pause it it's not online all the time it can sleep when you when you sleep the device uh, and it'll come right back when you get back in. You know, you're you're in good shape there. Bo, any recommendations for like, uh, you know, that time the cat was sick and you had to spend a little extra time with the cat, you know, and you're trying to play uh, at the same time. Or like a pausing get kind of game? Yeah, or one that where you don't feel... Like that, that turn-based dice one that you recommended that I ended up loving. I can't remember the name now. Uh, turn-based dice one. Oh, the, uh, the card, the single player card battler yeah what is that called again that's great uh, on steam deck also not wizardum gun, gun gore no. rogue some rather um, oh yeah rogue spell rogue spell rogue amazing little turn-based dice card thing i mean all turn-based stuff is technically you can put it down but the game will not progress uh every turn so anything turn-based is good yeah so if you like single player card or dice games are good 
games like Civ or even like um well Sims can be good because you can just pause like anything with the pause pause play mechanics. Yeah. Um those work. Uh Hearthstone. Maybe. Yeah, Hearthstone. And online if you're playing like Hearthstone like single player content. Again, that's the same answer kind of. Um Oh yeah, Slay the Spire is a good one in the chat. They don't have a timer on that, so Monster Train, same thing. Yeah. Any of these turn-based yeah. card battler things are pretty good call for card that. Card battlers are really good for that because they will not progress. There's like a, tons of them. So if it's a genre you don't like, well, it's not helpful. But if you like right. them, then there you go. But I don't think any like adventure game, like in theory, Baldur's Gate 3 is great or any CRPG because mm. you can just pause it. But if like... Some games have more of a momentum, like story-wise. If you're like following along on a story, you're not going to get immersed if you have to get up every 10 minutes yeah. to go away for another 15 or something like that. So that might be more frustrating. So like games with low narrative or immersion requirements, like I never really feel immersed when I'm playing a card battle. It's not what I'm playing those games it's not for. Not there. So, yeah. yeah. So like anything with strategy or tactics that's sort of short term or simple might be the the right thing you know yeah i agree I'm trying to think of anything else but that's kind of how i would i would go for that that's one area i don't have as much expertise in. don't have kids so you know i defer to john or scott's advice on that stuff i didn't even tell you guys about how i downloaded and played like four football games this week i'm gonna see if that sticks and then i'll talk about it next week <laughs> all right but don't football, huh? yeah but don't play football with a kid i don't think that'll work because that's less There's a new football game on the new and trending in steam right now called college bowl oh i need to look that at that one you played no i played something like a retro throwback one developer guy made something called legend bowl pretty pretty cool so far and i also played uh, I got a key from the people who make, what is it called? Mutant League. No, sorry. Mutant Football League 2, the sequel. Oh, College Bowl is made by the same people who made Legend Bowl. Oh, really? It just came out today. Hold on a second. That's still an early access. He making two games at once? Maybe it's just the same engine, just one's got college teams. Let's see. College Bowl? Bowl. It's on my new and trending right now. Oh, here we go. Steam oh, yeah, this page. is absolutely like same guy. Um, yeah, there's not. There's only ten reviews. It's out today, obviously, but a hundred percent positive. I, there, it's a very. He's done a really great job of capturing why the old pixelated sixteen bit, eight bit era of football was so much fun, and I love the fake teams. I love that stuff. Some people are like fake teams. I want the NFL. F that. I want like the Cincinnati buttholes and stuff like that. I want dumb names. <laughs> and that's what I get for the with these. Anyway, I'm in the, the mood Utah right now. Utah Hockey Club. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Everyone here is so annoyed. <laughs> Even though it's temporary, but I hate it. It's such a bad temp name. Utah Hockey Club. What is it going to be all white uniforms with Helvetica text that says Hockey Club on them? It's so dumb. Anyway. Uh, video games, they're great. Let's see. Moving on to this text from Colin from Seattle, who says, hello, core crew. It's Colin here. Going to have to plus one John. Oh, it's a lot of John today in our feedback. Plus one John on the Spider-Verse. Different frame rate thing. Love the Spider-Verse movies. Hated watching them. Just watched the trailers for Frag Punk and Mixtape, both which look like they do the same thing too, and literally got a headache from each of them. Uh, both seem like interesting games I will never touch with a 10-foot pole until, as John put it, quote, I become an accessibility setting, unquote. Um, yeah, I, the, we, we had a, a few other aspects of this come up in our Discord and stuff. Some people are just there with you that they are uncomfortable with that frame rate combo of like... I was surprised. Yeah. I was surprised to hear a lot of people are like, yeah, there's something about it. And it's not, again, it's not from like a, a mean place. I love the Spider-Verse movies. It's just something about it that makes me go, ooh, and like feel like I need to look away. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not as bad with the movies. The games are a little rough. It's going to be curious what it, what it feels like to play it. Mm -hmm. um, although I do have some experience with it because in the uh, Marvel Spider-Man games, you can get Spider-Verse suits for the characters and they go at a different frame rate mm. uh, from the rest of the game. And as much as I like the suits and I was like, oh, this is a great outfit. Um, as soon as I saw the frame rate thing, I had to 
turn it off. Uh, it really bugged me. So that's another reason why I'm a little nervous about these games. And, you know, it's fine. I don't want to tell people they can't do it. I don't want to go like, no, cater to me. You need to cater to me. Mm. Like, I think it's cool that we're exploring new things. But, uh, yeah, it is something that I just have a really hard time with, apparently. Yeah, I think you're not alone. I really like them and don't mind the thing. But clearly there are people out there who are annoyed, not annoyed by it. But like you said, it's not It's like a negative reaction. It's more like, ah, like you just you, like your brain just doesn't want to. I don't know. My don't, brain feels like I need to look away to re yeah. like recenter or something. And, yeah. And I feel it constantly whenever I'm looking at it. So yeah. it's weird. Totally could see that. Um, I misspoke. Legend Bowl came out in 2021. It is not an early access. I thought I'm thinking of a different game. I'm thinking of the, the undead one. Uh, and it's only nine bucks right now. So if you need like an old school injection of like retro football, but it, a modern, more modern, you know, version of it, nine ninety nine for Legend Bowl. It's very good. See, these guys know how to put shit on sale when they have something new coming up. Take note, Elden Ring. Did you buy Elden Ring yet, Scott? Not yet, no. Come on, do it. The show's almost over. <sighs> if I do Just it, it'll... get it. I'm... You know you're going to want to play it. Like... A... As if he couldn't buy it after the show. <laughs> he, can't, yeah. he can't. He'll forget. <laughs> like, we gotta I'm not going to forget. buying it now <laughs> while you're weakest. He's, he's going to forget. And here's the funny thing. Bandai Namco's doing the summer sale right now. Yeah. <laughs> they... Are, the, are they the really? The new game's out. They're literally doing a summer sale on Steam. <laughs> Elden Ring still isn't on sale right now. That's kind of assholey, honestly. It's a little assholey. That's because they're trying to get all the bucks from Scott, yeah. which he should give them. You should get into Elden Ring. There's never been a better time to get into Elden Ring. <laughs> trying to get all the bucks. <laughs> Gamers, we heard you. Oh, There's dude, never been a better time. Uh, well, there's your feedback. 801-471-0462. You can also email us, talk to the core at gmail.com. And I would like to take a moment to thank some patrons for being awesome. We didn't get any new ones this week, so hop in there and be new. But, uh, some, some old timers we want to mention Stephen Grander, Matt and Chris Borowski, Borowski rather you sound like a hockey player. Now I'm in the mood for hockey. I want, for some reason I get an occasional mood for sports video games, usually on the arcadey style side. I don't care that much about realism, but I'm just in a mood. So thanks, Baraski. You sound like a forward for the Philadelphia Flyers. Anyway. Utah. The hockey Utah Club. Hockey Club. Exactly. Uh, anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being uh, old timers. If you want to be like them, then you can take advantage of things like no commercials or ads of any kind on the show. You can get uh, pre-show content every week. We put some up today. Good stuff talking about He-Man and the Masters of the Universe today and whether that's anime or not. Ooh, intriguing. You should tune in and find out as a patron. Uh, other monthly benefits, including video game art in the mail and other cool stuff like host specials going up. I've got one all ready to go. Just got to post it. Give a couple days uh, sandwiched in between this and the next episode so you're not getting bombarded. But it's a good one, I think. It's actually kind of John's fault. John said once that I am I am often, especially with, well, with any games, I'm kind of like I'm at the arcade. And I have to be in a very specific mood. And sometimes it's just play a little of this, play a little of that, put a quarter in something else. And I've had a long th thinking about that. And I think I've got some some stuff you guys will want to hear at home oh, about cool. that and why I do it the way I do it. Anyway, that's all coming up. And if you want to be a part of it, patreon.com slash core show is how you do it. Everything else is at frogpants.com slash core. Tell your friends, get them involved, have them listen. It is the best three plus hour show that exists on the internet, period. Yeah. Yes. All right. Of any kind. There's no other show as good. Yeah. No, no one else dares to go this long. No. Nobody. Well, maybe someone does, but well, you know what? It's so good they gotta they gotta they keep us down. Damn straight. Speaking uh, of being uh straight and damned, grandma, here is a phone here is a microphone for you <laughs> to tell us once again what we played today so people won't forget. Take it away. And for those of you that don't remember exactly what video games got discussed on the show, here they are in quick succession. Elden Ring, Wayfinder, Death Must Die, Enshrouded, 
Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, Dragon Age Inquisition, <laughs> Dawn Trail, that's Final Fantasy XIV specifically, and Farthest Frontier. And Bo also talked about another game, but he didn't write it down, and I don't have time. Oh, I forgot. What was it, Bo? It was um... Wolfenstein: The New Order. Oh, oh Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein: The New Order. He's Come on, it's Wolfenstein. He's <laughs> fighting the now. Nazis. I forgot about it because I lived it. It's the old order now. Uh, <laughs> it's the old order. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Grandma's sounded extra grandma today. Oh, big time! Going. I don't know what's going on either, but I she don't is know what's very. What's going on? But for some reason, you sound way more grandma. Today. Very it's, grandma. -y. It's not. There is not one voice for grandma. It really yeah, depends true. on where I decide to lean into it. I think typically I normally do stuff like this. I just decided to grandma it up a little bit. I like yeah. it. So to this week, it was a little sweeter, a little tighter in the back of the throat. More like I'm going to make you a bunch of cookies. <laughs> you, got... you come over and just it's a real... give me a little kiss on the cheek. It's, say, a, it's a Cloris Leachman vibe I'm getting out of this one. Tell your mom and dad that they're not respectful. Yeah. They don't listen to me. <laughs> Watch Raising Hope. You'd swear this was John in that show. Uh, all right. Well, there you have it then. Thanks, Grandma. That's going to do it for us. Be here live on Thursday nights, 5 p.m. Mountain Time at frogpants.tv and listen to us live. That's going to do it for us. For me, for John, for Bo. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Hello, China. Oh, hi. Hello, China.